Hey everyone, we are back with day two of grown men acting like children. I mean, the frat brothers who were at a non-frat party and got into a fight. Yesterday we heard from Mr. Thomas, who was the primary aggressor in this situation when it comes to the final pew-pew that ended the confrontation. Today we're going to hear from various other party goers, including Mr. Swain, who was unfortunately hit by the ricochet that went through Mr. Cooper. For those of you who may have missed part one, yeah, I'd suggest going back and watching it, but your TLDR is that guy comes in from out of town, gets all amped up about the new frat brothers being at the party, older brother thinks maybe he stepped out of line, puts him in place. Um, they measure their you-know-whats and have a pissing contest and back and forth throughout the night. At the end of the night, they end up with a bullet in one of them, two of them. I guess it passed through one and stuck in the other. So anyways, and now we are at a hearing for immunity based on self-defense in the fabulous Judge McBurney's courtroom, who is getting down and dirty, making sure everything is explained to us in clear and concise language. Let's get into court. K-A-M-A-L, middle name, initials K, and last name Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R. All righty. Um, hi, Mr. Carter. As uh, Judge McBurney indicated, I'm Attorney Hawkins. Um, so I'm just going to ask you some questions. Um, how old are you? Uh, 49. And what do you do for a living? Uh, actually, right now, I'm an acquisition project manager for a GSA, a federal government job. Okay. And are you from the uh, metro Atlanta area? No, Gainesville, Florida, originally. Uh, moved here in 2007. And um, I'm gonna orient you to the parties that are a part of this matter. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know Mr. Phil Thomas? Yes. And how do you know him? Uh, fraternity brother, Mega Sci Fi. When did you all meet? Uh, roughly about 2009. 2009, okay. Yeah. Do you know Mr. Christopher Swain? Yes, I do. And how do you know him? He's actually another fraternity brother, but actually my line brother. We pledge at the same time. Okay. And did you, it's my understanding that you all um, pledged in spring of 2010. Did you know Mr. Carter? I mean, I'm sorry. Did you know Mr. Swain prior to 2010? Uh, yeah, around 2009 as well. No, close to the end of 2009, like November-ish. Okay. And how would you describe the relationship that you have? Let me go back to Mr. Thomas. How would you describe the relationship that you have with Mr. Thomas? Um, pre pretty good. Um, I would say pretty good friends. Um, um, don't get a lot of time to spend uh, with them prior to even prior to this, just do the schedules and stuff like that. Um, you know, I know he coaches football, our athletic director and so forth. And my schedule, I was traveling a lot when I was working for the Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, so I was in and out of town a lot. So didn't really get a chance to uh, speak with him much, but I would say pretty good relationship. Um, not, you know, not best friends, but, you know, friendly enough that you know, it was always good vibes when I would, when I would see him. Okay. And how would you describe Mr. Christopher Swain in your relationship? Um, I'll say one of my closest uh, frat brothers and friends. I was actually just with him Tuesday. Okay. And did I hear you say one of your closest line brothers? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. About how much time did you guys spend together? Uh, Tuesday? Um, no, in general. Just oh, general? You, you explained the time that you were able to spend with Mr. Oh. Thomas. So I'm trying to get the same... Um, okay. understanding um, um we we have an app called uh polo uh, which we kind of check in pretty much regularly um almost day to day i know that he, uh swain i guess he got a new phone or something so he hadn't really been on it as of late uh but we always talk um like i said he he knows my family to the point that my kids call him uncle uh swain so uh, i would say we have a definitely a, a pretty good relationship even if we don't see each other same thing with my schedule um i would talk to him or he would call me if he hadn't her for me in a while. And if I'm going through anything, I was, you know, currently uh, separated and, and he was one of the first persons I called when I was making a decision to move. So we do have a pretty solid relationship. Okay. And um, do you know Mr. Kendrick Cooper? Uh, yes, I've met him actually through Christopher Swain. 
Um, I think they crossed around 2012 and one of his line brothers is actually an associate of mine as well. Uh, so we kind of both, both doing both parties. Uh, I've been around, you know, Cooper over the years um, here and there. Um, always good vibes when I see him, you know, never, you know, always fun, loving type guy. So um, yeah, that's, that's our relationship, good associates. Okay, so based on what I've heard you say, your closest relationship from the three people that we just talked about is with Mr. Christopher Swain. Correct. Okay. Um, so I'm also, I want to circle back a little bit. You said you used to work for Veterans Affairs. Are, is, are you um, former military as well? Yeah, I'm a um, Iraq, um, Iraq war veteran, 14 years. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. Um, also, so I'm going to draw your attention to May 15th, 2021. Um, do you recall that day? Yes. What, um, how did that day begin for you? Um, actually, uh, we have a line brother of mine, uh, Timothy Carrier. Uh, he was in a bad accident, so he's been, he was paralyzed and been in and out of comas. Uh, so he was at the Shepherd Center. Uh, so we decided to go visit him. Uh, it was kind of like a day that everybody was kind of free. Um, I actually had my grant. Go I'm going to stop you right there. When you say we, who was we? Um, it was a few frat brothers. Uh, Phil Tall was with us. Um, Christmas Wayne was with us that morning. Um, oh man. Uh, Adair Rice, I believe, was another frat brother that was there. That I, those are the people I know for sure uh, was there. And like I said, we had to go up to the fence uh, to talk to him because he was still having COVID protocol. And so I think they had only like a, a initial family, immediate family, I'm sorry that can go inside the gate to see Tim Buff. So we all pretty much was at the gate, you know, talking to him, trying to lift up the spirit. So that was early in that day around uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, and um, after you left the Shepherd House, um, mm -hmm. what did you do? I actually, uh, actually initially came back to uh, Swain's house for a second. Um, just for a few, and then I know you said he was um, wanting to kind of do like a cookout. It wasn't any kind of frat thing, just a you know have a good time. That's not abnormal uh, for for Chris. Uh, so I had my granddaughter with me, and my son uh, wanted to uh, take my granddaughter to I uh, think some kind of fair or something that was going on, and so I left to meet him to uh, take her, uh, you know, so he could take her to whatever carnival, whatever they were, we were doing at that time. Okay. And was there ever a point in time where you made your way back to Mr. Swain's house? Yeah, I came in about, I got there about 3, 3.30 p.m. Uh, one of my other uh, line buzz I'm uh, close to uh, happened to, you know, call me to see where I was at because he knew I had went to see um, um, Timothy earlier. And so he was seeing if I was coming back over there because he heard I had been there early in the day, early that morning, rather. So I got there about 3, 2, 3 and 3.30. Okay. When you got back to Mr. Swain's house, um, who did you see? Um, several, <laughs> several frat brothers. Um, definitely, of course, I always make it a point to speak to the, the man of the house when I, you know, come to somebody's house, speaking to the people that own the house. So I made my way to find Chris. I think he was um, either inside uh, on the porch or something like that. So I remember going to find him and speak to him. Then, uh, you know, I made it back. Uh, diff different frat brothers, you know, that were around, you know, even you had some, you know, different, you know, guests, you know, male and female. So people that I recognize, I was going around speaking to everybody. Some people I had, like I said, I traveled a lot for my last job. So I was still working in the VA at the time. Uh, so people just hadn't seen me. Uh, so I would go, the people's happy to see me and so forth. So that's all I did, kind of made my way around, speaking to everybody and so forth. Um, and that's kind of how it started the day. Okay. And at the cookout, did you see Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I ended up seeing him a little later on. About if you can remember, recall uh, about what time? I would you say about I would say about thirty, probably thirty minutes. Like I said, I was tired of talking to different people closer to the to the house, um, and then I just happened, you know, kind of walking around, speaking to other people. And that's when I um, saw Mr. Thomas. Okay. Did you? Um, I know you said you spoke to Mr. Swain first. At any yeah. point, did you see Mr. Cooper? Yeah. So I saw him walking up. He got there, if I'm mistaken, maybe an hour or so around uh what i noticed him in probably an hour after i got there and you said he started walking up he was walking up to you 
No, he was just walking and I saw him because I hadn't seen him in, in, a, in a while. Um, that's when I noticed he was there, when I saw him walking up the driveway. Um, like I said, I don't know if he was there earlier or not, but I know when I saw him, it was about an hour after I got there. And we spoke because like I, I hadn't seen him in who probably about a year, you know, due to COVID and some other things. I hadn't seen him in a while. So, you know, talked to him, hugged him. And um, yeah, that was kind of our interaction. And, you know, he went around and, you know, you know, do what everybody does, you know, go to speak to everybody, if you, you know, those who had came late. If he was there earlier, like I said, I don't know. Um, you know, but uh, when I saw him, I saw him, you know, speaking to different people that came there, either when I got there or shortly after. Okay. And so when you saw him, when I saw him, you saw Mr. Cooper, mm -hmm. he was outside. Yes, yes. Okay. Was there ever a point when you seen Mr. Cooper inside the house? Yeah, much later on in the evening. Okay. And what happened when you saw Mr. Cooper inside the house? Um, going, like I said, I was going to going to the bathroom and you hear some kind of like altered, like some, I don't say red voices were raised, you right? So of course that catches anybody's attention. And um, that was, um, and then they say, you know, fight breaks out and and uh, it was uh, Bruce Richardson had, I, some was said to, to, to uh, rob Mr. Cooper up and, you know, he was defending himself uh, with Mr. Richardson. Like I said, I don't know who swung first or anything like that. By the time I was walking in, you hear the loudest and next thing you know, you see the tussle. And then I ran over there um, to break it up. And that's when I noticed it was Cooper again. Because like I said, I just heard the commotion and the way uh, Ms. Swain's house is set up. You kind of walk in, you can kind of see um, the back door and then you kind of go to the right, you to the bathroom and that's where you have a clear vision of the back door and that's where they were at towards the back door in the couch. <clears throat> so that's when I seen the tussling and you know people trying to pull and I went over there because uh, I know you know Bruce and then when I saw his crew I definitely grabbed him and say you know hey hey you know you know chill out whatever case it be and he was like you know I'm trying to bother me blah blah so I said to everybody in the house like and then they know me like I don't tolerate foolishness I'm known to escort people who act in this orderly out of the, out of any kind of cookout. So that's kind of my role with my line. I'm very protective of, of the people I care about. And so I kind of grab him and say, hey, you know, chill, let it go, let it go. You know, anybody messing with him, y'all just need to come talk to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and figure out what's going on. Cause I'm, you hearing stuff, um, but I don't know where that, that kind of altercation started. I don't even know why. Like I said, I walked in the house, it was ah, that's they know the tussling happened. And so I, I, you know, I did pull him, you know, off of him and just told him to chill out. Like, why y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, who is, who's, who's starting this? Like, why are y'all bothering? Cause Coop is not known to really bother anybody. Like I say, he's a happy go lucky guy. Okay. So but before we move on, I, I think I follow it, Mr. Carter, but what you're saying is by the time you got out of the restroom, this tussling was happening. So you don't know if someone threw the first punch, who it was, it was just that your friend Bruce and your friend Coop, um, or at least the two guys you know, they were at it and you helped break it up. Well, I never made it to the bathroom. I was walking in the house when I heard the, the tussling, going to the bathroom. Got it. And you were in route to I, the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In route to the bathroom. But the point I'm getting at is not whether you got to the bathroom or not. It's that the tussling had already started. And so you don't know who started yeah. it. You knew I need to break this up. Correct. Got it. Thank you. So once you break up the fight between Mr. Cooper and Mr. Richardson, um, what do you do next? Well, I'm talking to Cooper, like, what's going on? Because I noticed he changed clothes. So he was like, I'm just trying to get ready. I'm going to another party. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, man, look, the hell with these guys. If they got something to say to you, like I said, for my, and it goes to another altercation apparently that happened earlier uh, that I didn't even know had transpired until Later on, you're hearing people talk, oh, this happened, this happened. And so I'm telling him, just, well, just get dressed, man. You know, look, you always welcome here. This is Swain's house. Nobody can't tell you to leave but him, right? And so I'm like, no, just get dressed, whatever. And it seems to me he was, everything kind of calmed down. Bruce was in the, in the corner, kind of, you know, bros talking to him. Um, Coop seems to be, you know, calm and cool, collect. He just, you know, let it go. He didn't try to go back towards um, uh, Bruce that I remember. I go to the bathroom at this time, finally make it to the restroom. And then while I'm in there, I hear another, and I, you heard you use the bathroom, I run out and um, one of the frat brothers, I don't, I don't know his name. Um, you know, you gotta see people around, I don't know his name, but he kind of helped them like, 
you know, just let it go. It's still unclear what happened at size. Like we just trying to get him to leave. And so he ends up. Um, um, can I stop you for a second? Because I, yes. I need to follow the he's and the he's. So okay. y'all are you are trying to get who to leave? So one of the was trying to get Cooper to leave, to go ahead and leave. Because like I say, initially, what I was told by him, he was going getting ready. He was going to another party after leaving here because he had changed clothes in this. Okay, so one of the other frat brothers, are you also participating in trying to get him to leave? Yeah, so once I get outside and I see they kind of holding him up, I put holding him back. I don't even know who he was, I still don't know who he was trying to get to or get at. Um, at this particular time, I don't I don't know. So I'm like, Coop, just leave, man. Just just go ahead and get, because you leave it anyway. Go ahead and get, you know, go whoever taking you, whatever. So that's when things calm down. Um, things kind of calm down. I, I think they took him back. I think he went back inside first before he actually got in the vehicle. Because I remember once that calmed down, I walk, I see Phil, uh, Mr. Thomas, kind of wiping his hands and his face with a towel. Okay. So do you actually see Mr. Cooper get in a vehicle? Yes, I see him finally get in the vehicle. Um, he gets in the vehicle. I think they get him inside. I finally go back. I, go, I think they did take him inside. And I go back inside. And uh, and I see them, you know, finally talking and getting into the vehicle. He leaves. Um, he's in the... Yeah, he's in the vehicle leaving. And I think everybody's, you know, started to disperse and stuff like that. I'm kind of, you know, helping clean it up and stuff like that. Um, he, I see him get in the vehicle and they start to take off. I'm coming, I'm like I said, I'm um, back outside at this point. So whatever happened in between, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place at this particular point. By the time uh, I see him get in the vehicle, I'm walking back towards Phil and um, just, you know, kind of like, you know, well, hopefully he'd be going all this, this, doing this. I don't understand how this got this point, blah, blah, blah. And so Phil was like, you know, I tried to, you know, talk to him and he, you know, he, he splashed a drink in his, in my face. I knocked a drink on my face, something along those lines. I said, oh, so that's why you're wiping your, your, your hands and face off. And so, um, and so at that particular time, when I'm talking to Phil, um, that's when Swain starts walking towards um, Phil. And he was like, you know, talking to him like, man, y'all, you know, y'all, whatever issue y'all had, y'all should have let it go, whatever happened. And I started walking away because that was a private conversation. Like I said, I wasn't there for, I guess they got it to an earlier, that part I didn't see. Um, well, that part I wasn't around for um, with those guys, you know, whatever happened prior to that. So I let them talk. As I'm walking back towards the house, that's when I see uh, Coop hop out of the vehicle because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bruce, was um, Bruce and two other frat brothers were, I guess they rode together. They were getting ready to leave and that's when Coop hops up out the car, like trying to get the fight. Um, I was sick to take it Bruce again. He was getting not going at it with those guys. They was, one of the other frat brothers was trying to push him back into the, you know, I think he was in the back seat, if I'm not mistaken, push him back in the vehicle to leave. Okay, so I'm gonna take piece by piece of what you said, cause I, I gotta back you up a little okay. bit. Um, so, the first altercation I, or, or fight that you saw um, while going to the bathroom mm -hmm. was that that was Mr. Bruce Richardson and right. Mr. Kendrick Cooper. Correct. Okay. That altercation ended or that Correct. fight ended. Correct. Um, then Mr. Cooper is going outside. He goes outside and he gets in a car. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah he gets into the car. Correct. Gets okay. Into a, a truck, rather. And then he gets. Okay. So the fight when um, Mr. Cooper is being held back, mm -hmm. who is that fight between? That I don't know. I was in the bathroom. Um, okay. So let me, I guess, let me just clar clarify a little bit. So, Mr., you, you testified that. Mr. Cooper um, was put in the car and then he got out of the car. Yeah, the car drove off, actually drove off and got to the stop sign from the driveway, I guess, from the driveway uh, where it was parked somewhere nearby for him to get in the car and drive, uh, drive to the stop sign. That's where he hopped out. And who was he? Over. Okay. And who was he arguing with at that time? 
at the stop sign, I I want to say was saying something to Bruce. I don't know if Bruce said something to him while we driving by. I just know I saw him as I walked back towards the driveway. I saw him uh, hop out. So I don't know what prompted him to hop out. I just know he hopped out and was going towards Bruce Richardson again. Okay. And um, what did you do? Did you continue to go into the house? No, I just got to stop. Um, I, like I said, I'm walking, I, I left Phil because Wayne and Phil was talking. I was walking back towards um, the driveway because my goal was to get my plate that I had fixed <laughs> the mm -hmm. whole time because I helped clean up. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna finally get my plate. And this goes happens. So I'm kind of standing in the driveway, which is probably about maybe 10 to 15 feet from Phil and, um, and uh, Swain talking by the fence and his, and his truck. Okay. Mm. And do you ever see Cooper or Mr. Cooper, I'm sorry, coming to, Ms., to where Mr. Phil and Ms., uh, or Mr. Swain are? Yes. And yes. what do you see when that happens? So I see, I'm watching them trying to push him back in the vehicle. And it looked like when they pushed him um, in the vehicle, trying to push in the vehicle, he was still, he kind of turned, you know, trying to, you know, spin off. And that's when he, you could tell he saw Phil. And he's running towards Phil. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think some of his people kind of like calling him or trying to kind of trot behind him because nobody thought he was going to get to that point. You know, he was running towards Phil. You know, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. I can kill you, though. And and so I'm sorry. Stop. He said what? He said it's all your fault. Fine. It sounded like to me. He said I could have killed you. Or I could have. You know, I should have killed. I could have killed you. Something along those lines was said. Running back to him towards him. Um, towards who? Phil. Phil. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And he was. He kept yelling. It's all your fault. Like whatever was going that kept going on must have started with with Phil. Okay. What he was. Yeah. So you saw other individuals trying to put Mr. Cooper in a vehicle multiple yes. times. Yes, yes. Okay. And are you testifying that you saw Mr. Cooper running at Mr. Thomas? Yes. And yes. as he was running at Mr. Thomas, you heard the word kill. Yes, it sounded like to me, I heard the word kill. Not like I kill you, like the word kills. I could I could have killed you. And I took it as he was talking about the early altercation um, from them. Now, when and the reason why I, my mom went to that, because when him and Bruce got into it, he had a chokehold <laughs> on Bruce that was pretty much cutting his oxygen off, defending himself. And I know Coop is a Marine, just like I'm uh, trained um, to hand in combat. You know, and I was trained by Special Forces. The Marines train their people like on a special force level. So did he have the ability to probably choke somebody to death? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has. Um, so that's what I took it when I heard him say, like, I could have killed you. That's what I was, I, I was thinking he was saying. I could have killed you as in like, I could have when I was, you know, because rumor has it that he choked Phil early. So don't, don't get into rumors. Okay, well, that's what I heard. and that's Don't, what don't get into what you heard. Okay, well, my, what I heard him say was, you know, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. I could have killed. It sounded, he said, I could have killed you. But the word kill, it sounded very clear to me. That's what he said. The word kill came out. However, the verbiage was the word, I, the word kill. It sounded like that's what he said to me. Okay. Um, so as Mr. Cooper is running up to Mr. F uh, running up to Phil yeah. and um, wh where is Mr. Swain? At this time, it, Swain was nearly, uh, I would say about two to three steps when I initially when they were talking. I don't remember where Swain was at the time the gun went off because I started running towards Cooper. I was staying in the driveway. I'm thinking he's going to yell and yell and, you know, whatever, and then get back in the vehicle. But he kept running and he was running faster. So that's when I ran towards him to try to cut him off. Okay. And were you able to cut him off? Well, no, because by the time, um, like I said, speed progressed as he was moving. So by the time I kind of got to him, that's when I heard Phil say, you know, like, back up. I told you back up. And I heard pow, we both jumped back. And he actually fell back because he was, he apparently ended up being shot. 
So when he jumped back or fell back, I jumped back because he almost fell on me, on my on my leg. I'm like in my lower um, knees on down, almost fell back. Where he fell back on me, and I was jumping out the way. Okay, and what I just heard you testify was you heard Phil say, "Back up." Yeah, like back up, or yeah, like back up. And that was before the shot went off. Yeah. I don't have any additional questions for this witness. Okay, Mr. Carter, I've got a couple yes. questions before the prosecutor asks you any. Um, so you've described um, Mr. Cooper getting out of this car um, to engage. You, your theory is maybe initially he was going to engage Bruce. Um, was he the driver of the car? What what no. part of the car did he get out of? It looks like he hopped from the back seat, the back seat of the, the, the vehicle. Okay. Um, and uh, then you described he catches sight of Phil and he kind of wiggles out from the guys who are trying to get him back in the vehicle Correct. and he starts running towards Phil. Correct. Um how much distance did he have to cover to get from where that car was he had gotten out of to Phil? Was it 10 feet, a mile? No, I would give it about football terms about 30 yards, 30 to okay. 40 yards. All right. So more than 100 feet, uh, around 100 feet. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Um, and you described um, Cooper, Mr. Cooper, as running. And visually, I could see your hands um, on the screen there. You have both hands in front of you running like a person runs. Yeah. Um, is that how you recall Mr. Cooper running like a, a normal person um, runs? I don't mean that pejoratively. I mean, people can run yeah. with their arms like this. But regardless, he was running with both his hands pumping like you would run if you were running. I, I would say from my angle, yeah, like he was you know, running towards him. Now, I, he it looked like he ended up changing clothes. <clears throat> it looked like he ended up changing clothes. He had on shorts this time versus the pants. Um, it did like he pulled his pants up as he was running one time and, and he kept kind of going towards. Sure. Um, so he might've had a little sag going on with the pants and had to fix that. Um, but uh, it wasn't that he was running with one hand uh, out in front and one hand behind him. Not that I could see, no. Okay. I'm just asking what you could see. Yeah. Um, how far away, because it sounds like you were real close to Coop um, when he got shot. Um, yeah. How far away were you and Mr. Cooper from the guy you're calling Phil when the shot was fired? Um, I would say less than 10 steps from the front of his vehicle. Okay. If you had extended your arm, could you have touched Phil from where you were standing when Coop got shot? No. Would you have had to take a few steps more to get to Phil where he was standing when he shot? I'll say yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for clearing that up for me. Okay. Just a few questions, Judge. Hello, Mr. Carter. Uh, can you see me on the screen? No, I can't. You can't. Well, here, I can do, if, if you want to be seen, I can do, if you're going to be at the podium, I, I can't. I prefer the podium, Judge. No, that's I'm fine. I'll just do, going anyway. so you can see the guy in the suit there. That's who's talking. I got you. Excellent. Oh, you got the thumbs up. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Carter, thank you for your service. Um, thank you. Just want to start out, uh, just a couple quick points of agreement here. Uh, so you were at this party at Christopher Swain's house on May 15th, 2021. Yes. And uh, you were a guest of Mr. Swain's. Yes. And you and Mr. Swain are very close friends. Yes. But you're also friends with uh, Mr. Phil Thomas. Correct. And uh, you do have a relationship with Mr. Cooper and your testimony on direct was, uh, he's not known to bother anyone. No. N no, that wasn't your testimony or that's correct. I no, think you said he's-, he's not, Yeah, he's, that's correct. He's not known to start anything. You know, he's a happy-go-lucky guy. Correct. Okay. And uh, Mr. Carter, I, th I think we're in agreement here that uh, Phil used a handgun to shoot Coop that night. Correct. And a, uh, a handgun's a firearm. Yes. And a firearm's a deadly weapon. Objection again, Your Honor. It's a legal conclusion. So we'll go to deadly weapon. Let's not go beyond that. We'll stop in there, Judge. Okay. 
and shooting someone can lead to an injury. I agree. I'm sorry? Yes, I agree. And Phil, uh, you were aware that he had his vehicle there? Yes, he was standing by his vehicle. No one took his keys? That I don't know. I, I'm not aware of that. He had his phone on him? I didn't see his phone. And how long were you at the party for between your arrival time to when the shooting incident occurred? Uh, like I said, I got there around 3, uh, 3, 3.30. And I was one of the people that transported Mrs. Wayne to the hospital. So roughly seven hours? Yes, if that's, if that's the time frame. And Phil was at the party the entire time? From my understanding, yes. And he uh, never attempted to leave? I can't answer that. I don't know if he attempted to leave. And you talked about on direct how um, when Cooper was exiting a vehicle, there was a couple of people trying to hold him back. Mm. Are you aware that there was an exchange of words between Mr. Phil Thomas and Mr. Cooper? If, uh, Objection meaning, hearsay. Uh, uh, she said not, uh, okay, but he didn't ask what it was, just were words exchanged. That, if you want to get into content, then you may want to renew your objection. Although if it's what your client said, I'll probably overrule it. And, and I'm sorry, uh, what was your answer? I'm sorry. Um, my question was, when did the exchange are you talking about? Right before the shooting or prior it, it to was, that? Uh, to clarify, when Coop exited the vehicle, okay. Okay. was there an exchange of words between him and Phil? I would say once he got closer to Phil. Was there ever a point when Mr. Cooper stopped and they had words or this would have been words? You mentioned he was saying things like I could have or should have killed you um, while he's approaching um, Phil. Um, was there a point at which Mr. Cooper stopped and they were jawing at each other or the whole time? If there were words going back and forth, Mr. Cooper is also advancing on yes. Phil. Correct. He's advancing. The I don't remember him stopping until, like I said, when I got to him, if he stopped when he jumped back or fell backwards. Okay. So that's when the that's when we both heard a pow. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier that you witnessed um, this physical dispute between Cooper and Bruce. Correct. But during that dispute, you did not see any weapons. No. You testified on direct that when Coop was running towards Phil, uh, he said something to the effect of, it's all your fault. I could kill you. I should kill you. But you don't know exactly what Coop said. No, it, was, it wasn't super clear, but I heard the word, you know, as he's running, it's all your fault. I could have killed you. you know, I did hear that part because he's running and huffing and puffing, you know. Uh, did did you hear Coop say the word motherfucker at any point? At, at, to be specific really. at while he's approaching. I'm, I'm sorry, yes. During during the um the approach, uh did he use the term motherfucker at any point? That I don't remember. I just remember him running. If it if it, that was said, it had to be farther along before he got closer to us. And when Coop gets out of the car and he's running towards Phil, you saw his hands. At that time, yes. But you did not see any weapons? From my, my uh, view, no. Do you recall giving a statement at Grady Hospital on May 16th, 2021, at about 1 a.m. to Atlanta Police Detective McManus? Yeah, well, I don't know the uh, Ted's name, but uh, police officer's name, but he did walk up to me and he just flat out said, hey, did you hear the words kill? Something on those lines. I said, yeah, it was like something like kill. I could have killed. Something like that is what I said to him. Uh, I didn't know I was being recorded. He didn't tell me. I just said, you know, what it sounded like to me from my angle by the time he got to him. And um, 
I'm going to show you on the screen what's been marked as state's exhibit number three. Okay. Uh, this is the body cam recording of investigator McManus. Okay. Um, do you recall making a statement about seven minutes long? And during that statement to investigator McManus, you never mentioned the word kill. I wasn't, I wasn't asked, but one time um, by the cop that walked up to me. Uh, so can you explain any inconsistencies in what's on the recording mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to your body, uh, uh, your testimony today? Okay. Um, well, when I, that night we were finally got um, Ms. Crystal Swain in the, uh, I guess in the emergency room, uh, we was kind of standing, you know, by, you know, kind of waiting to hear something. Now the, I knew I wasn't going to be able to leave because the, the person that was injured, we dropped them off. Uh, so I just kind of was staying around whatever case it be um, before I even called the body, anything like that. Uh, one cop walked up to me and like I said, I don't know no names. One cop walked up to me and said, Hey, did you see the, hear the words kill? And, and I said, yeah, silent was, you know, kill. I could have killed you. Should have that. I don't know if he recorded it. I don't know. He just asked me that I hate the words. Um, I, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, later on, I may have been approached by another, another person. Um, as, uh, I think he had fear. I never spoke to fear after once we got to the, to the location, I never spoke to Phil again. So I don't know what was said or what he said. <clears throat> um, somebody else walked up to me and, you know, asked him some questions, whatever case it be. And I answered what was asked of me. And that's all I, you know, I remember that's for that part. We were still kind of in shock about this whole thing. Two people have been shot that I'm, <laughs> I'm cool with. So I was kind of, you know, people asking questions, what happened, so and so on. But yeah, I just remember the one cop just asked me straight up that I hear the words uh, killed. And then like I said, another uh, individual asked, and that, that was it. So if there's this consistent, if the one person was recording me and one was it, maybe that's the discrepancy. I know I was asked by one particular a cop straight up with did I did I hear those words? And I and I do word. and and I do understand, you know, in a in a situation like that, things do get a little hectic. Uh, so you would remember giving a second statement to investigator McManus where you changed your initial statement and then you did insert he you do affirm that the word kill was used. No, no, like I say, he, nope. And he I think I asked a really terrible question. Did. <laughs> I will second that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but let me rephrase that. Okay. Um, so you, you would agree that you did give a statement to investigator McManus where the word kill was used during the shooting incident. And, and before you answer that, don't get hung up on the names, uh, Mr. Carter. Right. No one here is trying to say, oh, you told McManus and not Jones. Yeah, I, right, I hear you clear. loud and clear. You don't know their names and that's yeah. okay. This is not yeah. a quiz about what yeah. you said to a specific guy. Yeah, right, well, like I said, when I was initially asked, kind of shortly after we got there, uh, like I said, I was about a hundred yards away. So I don't know what they were talking about. He just said, hey, you Jamal said yes. And then he asked me, you know, hey, did you hear the word? Like, it wasn't like a long conversation. Now, if he recorded, started recording, or the next person I spoke to, there's a couple of officers, whether they'll be a nosy or investigate, I don't know. But a couple of people, you know, like I say, one or two people talked to me, plus some other cops that was kind of standing there because it was another shooting that night. <clears throat> so I think the cop may have thought I was with the initial party that was there. I don't sure. There's a couple of people kind of walking up. But I do remember two different, uh, well, been asked twice. Uh, kind of the summary was going on. So whether I was, I don't know which one I was recording on or not. Okay. And, and uh, would you agree with me that about 15 minutes may have elapsed between the first question that was asked and the second time you were asked the question? I don't know the, the time frame, but I would say, no, I would say it's probably more than 15 minutes because it was a good gap of when we were just kind of standing around trying to get word of what was going on with, with, with Cooper and, and um, Chris was going. And uh, just to close out, I want to go back to your relationship with Mr. Thomas. Um, you guys are in the same fraternity. Yes, all of us are. Are you Except in the same chapter? Are you in the same chapter? Uh, Christmas Wayne, Philip Thomas, and myself were in the same chapter. And you've known each other for over ten years. Correct. And Phil's like a brother to you. No, Swain is Christmas Wayne is more like a brother to me. Yeah. I think that's all I have, Judge.
Mr. Um, Carter, you yeah. said you rode with Mr. Swain to the hospital. Um, I rode with Mr. Thomas, taking Swain to the hospital. Got it. So that was going to be my question is who, who, who drove? So Mr. Thomas drove in his Mercedes. You were a passenger and obviously Mr. Swain was in the vehicle as well. Correct. Um, were you present for when anyone rendered any medical assistance to Mr. Swain when he was lying there on the ground? Yeah, I was the one that ran into the house and got the towels. And by then, um, his sister, I think she was in the house and she ran over there. I ran and got towels, to, you know, military training kick in, do a tourniquet, stop the bleeding. So I got enough towels for Coop as well as, as Swain. And thank God I went to the bathroom. That's where I got the towels from. <laughs> Good thing you knew where that was. Um, right. So were you the one who put towels on either Mr. Cooper or Mr. Swain, or you gave towels to other people to apply them? Um, well, a little bit of both. I gave it to uh, the, the people that was in front of Cooper, and I was telling them, you know, real quick, hey, well, he was a, he was kind of coherent to kind of say what to do as well. Um, I said, hey, you listen to him. He, he, you know, he's not delusional. Like, listen to him. And they was, you know, applying the pressure. You know, I threw the towels. I went over there to um, Chris Swain as well, and I'm down there as well, holding while um, I think his sister, um, another guest that I don't know who it was uh, that was there, was all trying to uh, uh, you know tie a tourniquet to the area we thought where he was bleeding at. Okay. Um, and do you know how Mr. Cooper got to any hospital? Um, I want to say um, uh, Chris' sister um, and, and another friend of hers uh, took him to to because that was one of the vehicles that was was closest um i'm not sure if he took i'm not sure if he she took his vehicle or i mean mr swain vehicle or her own i just know they it was a vehicle close and they got him in there as we were trying to lift um chris swain into the back of field's truck got it and it sounds like you never got your plate of food <laughs> absolutely not all right <laughs> dang swain owes you all right um do you have any follow-up miss hawkins yeah sure honor um, Mr. Carter, you indicated that Coop is not known to start anything. What, how is no. Mr. How is Mr. Thomas known? Um, pretty much the same. You know, kind of like a you know fun-loving guy. You know, he's gonna crack jokes. You know, stuff like that. Um, you know, kind of you know protective of us if you know anybody kind of comes around. You know that. You know, like you know, he's like like the like the big brother. All the the guys he um, you know uh, help pledge with or whatever. So you know, like, I've never. I've never been around where there's an altercation with him at all. Okay. And um, just backing up to some of the things you said on cross. Um, when did Mr. Cooper stop charging at Mr. Thomas? When the shot went off. Okay. And how I many- I never got to him to stop him. But go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I said, I never actually made it to him to stop. But we, by, by the time I got to him, the, the gun went off. And we both kind of jumped back. Oh, he fell back. Okay. Um, and I know the, the prosecutor asked you on cross um, during the inter interaction between Mr. Cooper and Mr. Richardson, he asked you, you didn't see any weapons at that time. Is that correct? Correct. Um, what you did see was Mr. Cooper put Mr. Richardson in a chokehold? Yeah, he did have him in a chokehold. Was it your testimony that it was so tight that he was barely able to breathe? Objection, speculation. So the, the question is what his testimony was. That's okay. Um, so if it's withdrawn. If you recall what your testimony was, you can answer the question. I would say yes, because Bruce is about 6'3". Coop is maybe 5'7". So for the guy to kind of go limp <laughs> as he had his hand around him, uh, I would pretty much say this is about military training. Again, at combat, he was losing oxygen and, and kind of like let go. I, it was more to honestly, it was more. Yeah, he he could have he could have choked him out till he went to sleep. Actually, so Bruce was by far the larger of the two between Coop and Bruce. Correct. Okay, and how would you rank, since I know now lines are in height order, if you had to put <laughs> Phil on a line with Coop, who's a higher number? Uh, well, it actually depends on the number of people in line, but I think 
I know they're different lines, but if they were now yeah, on the imaginary twenty, they had to they had to repledge. Right. Uh, if it was between the two, uh, Coop would be in front of. Well, yeah, I would say Brian be in front of Phil. They'd be about they they're relatively about the same height, not too far from each other. Okay, there's not a big size difference. One like with Bruce no, was, and Coop, it's not yeah, like that. No, yeah, there's no noticeable like real, you know, big advantage to neither one of them. If they were in a boxing match. Got it. Okay. Did you have anything else, Ms. Hawkins? Yes. Um, we have established that there may not be a big size difference. Was there a big, was there an age difference between the two? Uh, so I'll be 50 this year. So 50, Phil is about 53, I want to say. Um, I'm not mistaken. Um, and Coop is, I don't think he's 40 yet. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Nothing further, Judge. All right, um, Mr. Carter, again, I appreciate you dialing in. I know that it's a complicated time for you and your family. This is important um, and we needed you and you took time to do that. And for that, we are all very appreciative. Um, can Mr. Carter be excused or do you expect you might recall him in? I don't expect to recall him, Judge. Okay, um, Ms. Hawkins, may he go? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. You're free to go. Thank you, you have a good one. You too. All right. Um, do you have any other witnesses, Ms. Hawkins or Ms. Foster, um, on behalf of or in support of the immunity motion? No, Your Honor. At this time, the defense rests. Okay. Um, do you have more evidence you want to put on? I do have more evidence, Judge. However, I'd like at this time, uh, now that the defense has rested, uh, to make an oral motion to dismiss. Uh, I think at this juncture... Judge, dismiss or deny the motion? To deny... The immunity motion. Okay. Um, I think at this point, the evidence that's in the record um, is insufficient for the defense to carry their burden by a preponderance that the defendant is entitled to immunity in this case. I think that when you heard from the defendant and Mr. Carter, there are a couple of clear things here. Mr. Cooper was unarmed throughout the entirety of this seven plus hour party. He was unarmed at the time that he approached Mr. Thomas, and he was unarmed at the time that he was shot. I uh, also think that the evidence shows that Mr. Uh, Cooper's hands were up while he was running towards Mr. Thomas. I don't think that it's reasonable to um, utilize deadly force in a scenario where somebody is merely running at you with their hands exposed. Now, I do know that Mr. Thomas did testify that Mr. Cooper's hand was behind his back, but I also, uh, I, I think that the evidence shows that he may have been pulling his pants up based on Mr. Carter's testimony. Uh, I think that um, at this point, what we have is Mr. Thomas, uh, who doesn't normally arm himself when he gets inside of a vehicle, uh, armed himself prior to Mr. Cooper running at him from a distance between 100 and 200 feet where he had an avenue of escape. And I think that the record also shows that there was a good bit of distance between Mr. Thomas and Mr. Cooper when the shot was fired uh, as evidenced by Mr. Carter's testimony when your honor asked him about his arms length away from Mr. Thomas. It was arms length away plus a couple of steps, uh, which is several feet. Uh, so I think that there was uh, definitely other options that could have been utilized by Mr. Thomas uh, prior to resorting to using a firearm, pointing it at the direction of Mr. Cooper and consequently Mr. Swain, who's in the area, and discharging a round, especially given Mr. Thomas's military knowledge, training, and experience over the years, a 20-year career in the military. So I, I don't think that the defense has carried its burden at this point, Judge, and uh, I would just ask that Your Honor uh, deny the motion. Before I hear from one of Mr. Thomas's lawyers, what is your response to what I suspect I'll hear, which is there's no duty to retreat. Um, you've explored that very thoroughly. Um, Mr. Thomas could have left after that first verbal encounter where it's described as a headlock. It doesn't sound like it was anything like what Cooper maybe was doing to Bruce, 
but there was still an exchange. It wasn't a pleasant one. And Mr. Thomas didn't leave that feeling real good about Mr. Cooper. He could have left after that. After encounter two, where he was punched, um, he could have left. Um, but he, he, he wasn't required to. And even at that ending, when um, Cooper is running towards him, and that sounds to be uncontroverted, that uh, it is Mr. Cooper who is approaching um, Mr. Thomas and not vice versa, Mr. Thomas stood his ground. And I think in Georgia, um, that's okay. Uh, there's not an obligation to diffuse or flee. Um, it might be smart. There may have been 15 other better, wiser, more prudent ways to resolve it. But I don't think that's the test I apply, the wisdom test, because he failed. Um, but um, he uh, was standing his ground and someone who maybe on several occasions said, I'm going to kill you or could kill you, um, is, is running at him and, and behaving, I think we'd all agree, somewhat erratically. Um, so how does this not keep going forward? In other words, why is it, it appropriate to deny the motion at this juncture? And Judge, I think it's important to highlight why he didn't leave, which shows um, that Mr. Cooper really was not a threat to Mr. Thomas. Uh, you know, we have these previous engagements between the two where there's some touching, some tussling, some words exchanged, but at no point in time is a weapon ever seen, a weapon uh, ever uh, alluded to. And I don't think that uh, words, uh, no matter how opprobrious and threatening, uh, should just allow an individual uh, to shoot someone that they know is unarmed. Okay. What are we going to hear from the defense? I saw it. Your Honor, um, as you know, the state knows, we only have to satisfy a burden of preponderance of the evidence, which is only a 51% showing that Mr. Thomas uh, acted in self-defense. Um, I'm going to start with the mischaracterization of evidence that um, the state started with saying that um, Mr. Thomas doesn't normally arm himself when he gets in the car. Mr. Thomas got on the stand and he said, my gun goes with me everywhere I go. 99.9% .9 of the time, my gun is in my car. So it's not that he armed himself to go to this party. He arms himself every time he's in his vehicle. Um, so I, I wanted to start with that. Um, also, there's been plenty of evidence and not just the evidence from Mr. Thomas, because obviously he is he's an interested party. Um, but you've also heard evidence from um, Mr. Jamal Carter, who explains what's happening in the moment that the shot ha shot goes off. I get that there were multiple interactions um, between Mr. Thomas and um, Mr. Cooper. And the state indicates that um, Mr. Thomas was in no real threat during the other altercations. But in this one, when the, when the shot went off, he was. There's a man charging at him who's already said on numerous, well, three times at least, that I will kill you, I should have killed you. Now you're running at me, is this the time that you're gonna kill me? Because you should have did it before, but now you're coming at me now. Um, so I would submit to you that that is sufficient evidence um, to say that Mr. Thomas was fearful and as a reason, fearfully, he was fearful and any reasonable person, um, I would argue, would also be fearful in that moment. Um, and but but fearful of what? Um, it, because it, it, it the test is reasonable person, not just your client, but reasonable person. Um, fearful that he might get a drink knocked in his face again. Fearful that he might get punched again. Fearful of what? Fearful that he's going to kill him because he should have killed him before, but he didn't. Because obviously, feels still alive at this third altercation. Right. So I should have killed you. So now that I have the opportunity, I'm going to kill you. Um, so fearful in that he was going to be killed. Not, we're not even talking great bodily harm at this point. We're talking death. Um, and I think that that was made clear, not only by Mr. Thomas, but also by Mr. Carter. Um, I think there's a lot of discrepancy in the testimony that was provided by Mr. Maddox. Judge, I'm just going to object to Mr. Maddox. Yeah, Mr. Maddox. Okay. I, well, oh, it, it's fine I that he's it. testified. I can't weigh that um, because I started thinking about, well, you, gosh, you know, there's testimony that um, uh, Mr. Uh, 
um, Cooper had his hands in front of him like this when he got shot. And there is testimony like that. But that is something that just because we were accommodating Mr. Carter's schedule, we took out of order. And that is my mistake, Your Honor. That's okay. <laughs> so what we've got, to, what we're confined to for this academic exercise is what your client testified to and what Mr. Carter testified to. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so given the information that was provided, even to the extent that Mr. Carter indicated that Mr. Thomas said, stop, uh, back up. And he did it back up. The only time that Mr. Cooper stopped is after he was shot. There was one shot. And in that one shot, shot it stopped the threat of Mr. Cooper. Um, so I submit to you, Your Honor, that that's sufficient evidence, um, at least proof beyond, not beyond, proof by the preponderance of the evidence that Mr. Thomas acted in self-defense and therefore he should be immune from prosecution. Okay. So um, at this point, um, my finding is that um, considering just the two witness testimonies, um, Mr. Thomas, who testified under oath, I feared for my life as this man approached me. Um, and that's why I shot him. That's why I used deadly force. That alone, um, if one credits that testimony, um, and that testimony additionally included, I couldn't see his hand. He had his hand behind his back. That alone would meet the burden. Um, there has been um, some impeachment of that testimony, not through Mr. Maddox, because we're tabling that, but uh, Mr. Carter's description of how Mr. Cooper approached um, Mr. Um, uh, Thomas is not consistent with what Mr. Thomas said, but it's not, I don't find that there are sufficient inconsistencies yet, just considering those two witnesses, that um, uh, it was unreasonable for um, Mr. Thomas to conclude that he was at risk of receiving serious bodily injury or at risk of being killed um, by the person who was running towards him saying or yelling, not just saying, um, either I am going to kill you or I should have killed you before and approaching beyond the point where we heard from Mr. Carter, Mr. Um, Thomas was saying, you need to back up or, or stop coming towards me. And yet Mr. Cooper persisted. That's not a finding that I'm granting the motion, but it's a finding that based on what I've heard from the first and the third witnesses, um, there is enough, in particular from the first witness, Mr. Thomas, who has shared with us as the only person in the room who can, this is what he was thinking. Um, I have to push that through the lens of reasonableness, and that will become more fully informed as I suspect I hear more from the state's witnesses about um, what really would be reasonable to be thinking about Mr. Cooper and the threat that he posed. But I think based on what we've heard from um, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Carter alone, um, I can't say that um, the um, defense has not met its burden. So motion well taken, motion denied, and we will return to the state's presentation. Judge, the state will call Christopher Swain. What city and state All are right. you live in? I'm Atlanta, Georgia. And what do you do for a living? I'm um, in education, education coach, mentor. Uh, do you have any particular ties to any fraternities? Yes, Omega Sapphire fraternity. And um, what particular chapter in Omega Sapphire are you in? Um, Phi, Kappa, Phi Kappa Kappa, military chapter out of East Point, Georgia. Phi Kappa Kappa. Phi double kappa. Yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Swain, uh, can you describe for the court um, how you know Kendra Cooper? Um, Kendra Cooper is one of my fraternity brothers. Uh, pledged um, um, try mu or mu 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 uh, fraternity. Helped with his pledging process. Kind of like his mentor, one of his fraternity brothers that kind of helped him through to where he is on uh, fraternity. And how long have you known Mr. Cooper? Um, seven, eight years. And can you describe for the court your relationship with Mr. Philip Thomas? Yeah, Philip Thomas, um, pretty much like the, uh, he's my DP, a dean of pledges. The guy that pledged me, brought me through the fraternity. I'm a part of um, Phi Kappa Kappa. He's also a member of Phi Kappa Kappa as well. 
And how long have you known Mr. Thomas? Uh, since 2010. And uh, how would you characterize your relationship with Mr. Thomas prior to any incidents we're going to talk about today? Um, Thomas, Mr. Thomas is a solid dude. Um, anything I needed, call for. Um, I Sometimes I didn't even have to call him. He would just interject. Um, if I was going through a rough time, financial phase, somewhere to sleep, somewhere to stay, food, you name it. He was always there with me, um, coaching tips. Uh, he knew I was a high school coach, willing to come talk to my kids about um, getting to college, the steps they need to take, if you name it, anything. So you guys are friends? Yes. Uh, so now I want to draw your attention to May 15th of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall uh, any parties that you hosted that day? Yes, I did. I had a um, party at my, uh, at my house. And uh, was your house located at 688 South Elizabeth Place Northwest? Yes, it was. Is that located in Fulton County? Yes, sir. And uh, what was the party for? Um, just us just getting together, nothing really major. Just friends, family. Um, I guess like during the pandemic, nobody was able to get out. Finally had an opportunity to kind of get together and word spread and everybody came over. And what time did the party start? Um, exact time, I really don't know, I can't recall. I said around, Three o'clock, something like that. It was in good in the evening. And uh, about how many people did you have at the house? <laughs> uh, Too many. <laughs> yes. What you said. Um, and overall, uh, you know, how long uh, did the the party last uh, up until uh, this up incident? until the, the incident? For sure. So uh, could you give a time frame? I said that? from 3 to 12 to midnight. About eight, nine hours? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall witnessing any type of physical altercations between Kendrick Cooper and Phil Thomas that day? No. Now, do you recall any incidents that ultimately led to a shooting? Yes. So can you describe for the judge uh, kind of what transpired and resulted in, in this shooting at your party? Um, I say around 7 o'clock, 7.30. Uh, Phil approached me, asked to do I know Kendrick Cooper. I explained to him, yes, I did. He was like, hey, can you talk to him for me? Um, or basically see what's going on with them. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of altercation they got into or what disagreement they got into or whatever the case may be. Um, Phil kind of walked off, looked back, let me talk to Coop. I, I talked to Cooper and I was asking like, what's going on? He was like, I don't know nothing, man. Like I told the guy, I don't really know who he is, so on and so forth. And that was pretty much it. And I was like, listen, all right, man, well, keep everything cool. I'm going back to host a party. Let me know if you need anything. And that was pretty much it at that point. Uh, now, uh Mr. Thomas was a guest at the party? Yes. Um, what was Mr. Cooper's standing at the party? Uh, was he also a guest? Yes, he's actually staying with me at the time. He lives out of state, so he came to visit. Uh, so when you were saying he was staying with you, was that for like a weekend? It was a weekend. Uh, at your party, was there the consumption of alcoholic beverages? Yes. Uh, are you aware of there being any drug use at the party? No. Um, after you were approached at about 7 p.m., mm -hmm. um, walk the court through uh, some of the things that happened at the party uh, after you went back to hosting your event. Um, dancing, hopping, or marching, uh, entertaining people. Um, I then witnessed. Um, Cooper and Mr. Thomas um, kind of hidden behind my house, like I have a shed behind my house. Um, and along with some other guys, I guess to have a conversation that I don't know about, I would address the issue around nine, uh, seven o'clock, 7.30. Um, it was, had to be like, a, I say uh, two hours later, an hour and a half later, somewhere around that time. At that point, um, I kind of waved them off, like, y'all go ahead, do what you're gonna do. I was talking to a young lady at the time, so I, honestly, my focus went on them and all. It's understood. Um, do you recall witnessing Phil Thomas make any phone calls that night? Yes. Uh, what do you recall 
uh, witnessing during that phone call? Um, during the phone call, he just kept calling random people. Um, if I'm not mistaken, his his line brother, Denaris Heard, who's a lawyer, um, Kendrick's line brother, he called him. Um, and everything was referring to, I guess, the altercation him and Coop had gotten to previously. Um, not, again, I don't, not previous to the altercation whatsoever. I was literally asked to kind of calm, calm Phil down um, because he was trying to shoot Coop, something along those lines. So I wanted to go talk to Phil. My biggest thing was, hey, man, just go home. We'll figure everything else out during the situation tomorrow, whatever the case may be, because I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Um, and that went on for a while. Just, I, we probably was outside maybe two hours just having a conversation or me trying to escalate the situation to see exactly what was going on. I want to make sure I followed what, what you said. So uh, several hours before... Mr. Thomas shot Mr. Cooper and you. Mm -hmm. um, you had been asked by someone to engage with Mr. Thomas because there was a perception that Mr. Thomas was going to shoot Mr. Cooper. Yes. And did you talk to, and it may be you're going there in a minute, did you talk to Mr. Thomas about no shooting at my house? You, you can't do something yeah, like I mean, that? Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a given. It was, it was more, I was trying to just get him to leave and go home. Okay. Um, and the reason I say that was, um, he was kind of looking for his gun in his car, and I kind of was looking for his gun in his car. And if you're looking for your gun in your car, then you can get in your car, you can go home. It's just that simple. Um, so he was calling people. I don't know if he was asking for where his gun was, what the case may be, but we couldn't find it. I remember telling him verbatim, go, just go home. If somebody might have took your gun, they might have took it home or whatever the case may be, and we'll just get it later or we'll get it tomorrow. Uh, do you? I'm sorry. I just to uh, keep, keep working on this one. Yes, um, so, several hours before the shooting happens, you are encouraging, maybe even directing, um, because it's your place, um, Mr. Thomas, to leave. Yes. He doesn't leave. Does um, mm -hmm. he tell you why he's not going to leave, or he just ignores you? I mean, no, no. He, he well, he kind of refers to it like basically, Coop should be Cooper should be leaving, not him. Pretty much along those lines. For me, it didn't, I didn't really care, really care who left. But Cooper was already standing there, so that was not even a conversation. It was more that you're at your car. Just go ahead and leave. I figure everything else out from here. I was just trying to de-escalate the situation. Sure. Um, so a few hours before the shooting, you were with Mr. Thomas at Mr. Thomas's car when Mr. Thomas was looking for his gun. Yes. Thank you. Are you aware of Mr. Cooper getting involved in any other physical altercations with other people at the party that night? Yes, Cooper got into a physical altercation uh, with a gentleman named Bruce Richards. He got into a physical altercation with him. Um, I was told there was a fight going on in my house when I walked in. It was kind of separated, broke up at the time. I don't know the details that led into it. I did see him and Bruce and um, Cooper getting into an altercation. I did. And uh, what was the, the resolution to that? altercation. Uh, Bruce ended up leaving going home. Uh, what, what did Coop do uh, after Bruce left? Do you remember? No, at the time, Coop was getting dressed, getting ready to go out with his, um, his guys from college. Some of his guys from college I had met the night before. They all came down. They was getting ready to go out to like a nightclub or night on the town or something of that nature. Uh, so it's your understanding that he was he was leaving the party. He wasn't getting kicked out of the party. No, no, he was, he was definitely leaving. He was changing clothes to leave. Well, as, as I'm getting it, um, and I'm getting this from you, Cooper couldn't get kicked out because he's staying with you. It's, right. it, it's like saying to the resident, you can't reside here anymore. Right. Like, why, gonna... why would I invite somebody in town and tell them they got to go? Okay. So uh, we're in this de-escalation period for mm -hmm. a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it's getting a little later in the evening. Mm -hmm. And um, now we can kind of focus on the actual shooting incident. Mm -hmm. um, explain to the court how you recall that entire situation. How did that go down? So I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Thomas or Phil Thomas. And as I'm talking to him, I keep seeing his eyes kind of go over my shoulder. And I'm like, what are you looking at? Where are you and Mr. Thomas talking? We're, we're like in the middle of the street towards the schools. I, where I stay at on South Elizabeth, I'm literally across the street 
from John Lewis Invictus or the Old Best Academy. Okay. Um, we're pretty much like close to that, that street, that sidewalk towards the school. Are you near his car? Yes. I'm pretty much at the front of his car. Okay. So you and he are at the car, you're talking with him. And if he's looking, he's looking up the street towards the stop sign? Correct. Right okay. behind me, right. Just, mm-hmm. Got it. And what are you talking to him about? Pretty much just, just like, go, just go home. <laughs> okay. That was my pretty much conversation. I just go ahead and go home. I figure everything goes out. We can all have a conversation in the morning. Not sure exactly what's going on, but we have more level heads. That was my goal. And uh, at some point, did uh, Mr. Cooper become involved uh, with you and Mr. Thomas? Yes, he did. So Cooper came up behind me. Again, like I said, I turned around. And I, when I turned around, in my mind, Frank, I'm just getting the situation. I think I got Phil on the ropes. You're about to go home. We're going to just be a good night. We're, we're going to be fine. Because, again, I wanted to get back to the young lady. But that's, I'm going to be real. That's what I was at. With. So you wanted a lady and this other gentleman was just trying to get to his plate of food. Everyone just had these very innocent desires. I'm going to go do these things. I don't know, if my was gonna be I don't know about how innocent yours were. But. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was my main, main goal. Um, and, yeah, so I looked. I turned around. Coop was behind me. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, let me just, um, talk. Like, just go. Just move. Coop kind of side pushed me and was like, what's going on? Like, what's what? I seen Phil raise. I was like, no, 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 no. Boom. Shot right. uh, Now you were, you were raising your hands with your palms up and, mm-hmm. and facing towards me. They were outward. Um, is that a, is that your recollection of what Mr. Cooper was doing prior to being shot? And Coop was like, he was kind of like this, right? I was standing, I guess on the side of Coop. I just remember when the gun was fired, I was like, you shot me. I thought he just missed Coop altogether. I just remember he shot me. I grabbed, grabbed my leg. And I grabbed the fence because I was actually on the sidewalk at the school. And I just slowly slid down. Um, and I just remember blood just gushing all out of my legs. I remember having, I was kind of mad because I had some Adidas pants. I've been worn for a while. Yeah, and he was some, not going to like the blood situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but my shoe was gone. I was looking for my shoes, too. They mm-hmm. were gone, too. So I had some Adidas pants on some Adidas shoes. But everything was covered in blood. I vividly remember that. And it was black. So I definitely remember that. Um, so, you know, you, you recall being shot. Do you recall a, a firearm being pointed at you? No, not at all. Do you remember where Cooper was coming from? I know that you said he was coming from behind you. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know where he was coming from or what he was doing? I wasn't sure. Um, I, I don't know if he came from my, my front porch of my house because the front porch of my house is literally by the stop sign. Or he was coming from the vehicle that he was supposed to get into with his friends from the stop sign, but they both was in the same general area. About how far away were you and Mr. Thomas from that stop sign? Could you estimate the distance? Yeah, it was probably like 50 feet. It wasn't far. And how would you describe uh, Mr. Cooper's demeanor when he was approaching? You and Mr. Thomas. Kind of like cool, but irritated. Like, what's the problem? What's the deal? Kind of confused, if you will. When um, Mr. Cooper came up, it sounds like he came from behind you, so you didn't necessarily see him coming the whole time. Right. Did he run past you? Did he walk up behind you? I was able to turn around and literally touch Mr. Cooper. Okay. Like, when I say touch, like, grab him by the waist, like, hey, I got this. Kind of. He was like, no, I'm going to have this conversation with him. Got it. But but as you turned and, and put your hands on his waist, he wasn't sprinting towards you? No. He was either walking or standing still? Pretty much like right behind me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you turned and engaged him and mm-hmm. he said... I was able to touch cool. Got it. And he indicated to you, no, I'm gonna, I want to no, engage with yeah, Thomas. Right. I'm going to have a conversation with him. Got it. He didn't want to talk to you. Right. Okay. Uh, do you recall Mr. Thomas saying anything to Cooper? No, I really don't. I just remember saying no, 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 because I just seen him raising up with the gun. Throughout the day, do you know if Mr. Cooper was armed with any weapons? No, not that I know of. Um, As things escalated throughout the day, was Mr. Cooper armed? No. 
you uh, you've testified. You saw Mr. Thomas uh, pull out a gun and point it. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize he had a handgun? Once he pulled it out. And you didn't have any weapons on you? No. I think that's all I have this time, Judge. All right. Ms. Hawkins or Ms. Foster? It's me again, Judge. All right. We're ready for you. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Swain. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Okay, so I got some questions for you. No problem. Um, I'm going to start with this incident took place on May 15th, 2021, correct? Yes, ma'am. And since this incident has taken place, you've spoken to your sister, Dominique Sadler, correct? Correct. You've spoken to um, Mr. Cooper, correct? Correct. Um, you've spoken to um, uh, Mr. Maddox, yes. correct? Correct. Um, Mr. Maddox is the gentleman who for a while was dating your sister. Correct. Um, but you've had conversations with each and every one of those since this incident took place. Sure. Okay. Um, so let me just actually start with the direct. Um, the day, your Saturday, May 15th, uh, 2021, actually starts with you going to the Shepherd House, correct? Or Shepherd mm -hmm. Center? Was it? I can't recall. Um, you don't recall you, uh, Mr. Thomas, Jamal Carter. Um, yes, we did, because Tim, Tim was at the Shepherd Center. Uh, my line brother, Tim. The line brother correct. was at the Shepherd Center. Correct. We all went to go visit him. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that was earlier in the day, correct? Correct. Um, and you drove your own vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and Mr. Coop, I mean, Mr. Thomas drove his own vehicle. Correct. Um, at some point, you decided, hey, we are about to have a kickback. It's going to be at my house, correct? Correct. Um, and this was not a Omega Sci Fi. Uh, event. Not at all. Um, this was family and friends. Correct. You had non Greeks, Greeks, mm -hmm. women, children. Correct. Grandchildren, all everything. Correct. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, a um, couple things. Yes. Please wait till Ms. Hawkins is done with her question, even though you know the answer. There's no buzzing in early. Um, and then, Ms. Hawkins, you're doing a rapid fire questioning because you're just providing a setting, but you need to make sure. Greeks, non-Greeks, and he's saying yes to each one, and you're adding it, so we can't have you all talk over each other. Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Um, okay, so, um, and you said this party starts sometime in the afternoon. Correct. Um, before you make it back from the Shepherd Center, there's people already at your house, correct? Correct. Um, and they've kind of gotten things rolling. Was that yes? Okay. Um, and you get back, it's your house, you're the, you're the host of the party. Mm-hmm. You got to say yes or no. Yes. Okay. Um, no so, <laughs> um, and as you and the judge indicated, there were too many people at the party. So that was a lot. A lot of people. Got it. Um, so you indicated that Mr. Cooper was already at your house. Was he? I'm not sure. I know, I know some people that were already there waiting on me. I can't recall exactly who they were. Was he staying? He was staying at you, though. Correct. Staying at your house. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. But he wasn't like there 24 7 or waiting on me to come. Okay. Um, I can't I can't say that he was sitting there waiting on me. So he was essentially just coming and going as he pleased um, mm -hmm. while he stayed in the house with you. Correct. OK. Um, and. Everybody was just having a good time, right? Great time. <laughs> um, so. I'm going to direct you to, uh, well, you made a statement to the police, correct? Yes. The day of the, well, the incident happened on the evening of May 15th, but correct. you spoke to the officer either the next morning, correct? I think it was next morning or the day after that, something like that. Did um, they come to your place or were you part of this? A bunch of people went to the hospital. No, when I'm Because okay, you went to the hospital. You got shot. So, of course, you went to the hospital. Did they come to you? At the, you just stayed home to clean up, including your Adidas. You had to clean those up. <laughs> so, you went to the hospital 
the police came to you. I don't know how long you were out um, before you were able to interact with folks. Correct. So now I was, I'm, it might have been the next day or two, a day, two days after. But yes, I talked to a, a detective or officer that came into the hospital and had a conversation with me. Okay. So this was at Grady where you met with the police. Correct. Okay. And um, you would agree with me that your the conversation you had about the incident on either May 16th or some day after is closer in time to the incident date than today is, correct? The 15th, you said you mean? Yes. You said 16th. The 15th, or the, well, the 15th, you said, let me back up. You mm-hmm. said the party ended at 12 a.m. So we're now into the 16th. Okay. So you get transported to the hospital, correct? Yes. So it's now the 16th, May 16th. Okay. All right. And the officers come talk to you May 16th. I, yes, I guess. And it's fair to say that the statement you made on May 16th is more accurate or more close in time to the statement or to the incident date, correct? I guess. Okay. Um, so <laughs> are you so the statement that you made was truthful, correct? Yes. And you were giving the full scope of what happened on that incident date, correct? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you told the officers everything that you knew. From that standpoint, I think. Okay. And at no point. At no point did you describe multiple times that you that will at no point did you say at seven o'clock, I told Phil to go home. It wasn't seven o'clock when I told Phil to go home. Okay. I guess we need to walk back through what the prosecutor was asking you because I'm a little confused about the timing. Um, my understanding is that you indicated that you spoke to Phil around seven o'clock. No. Okay. I said around seven o'clock, Phil came up to me. Is that had a, have a, had a conversation with me about do I know who Kendrick Cooper is? Is that not a conversation? Yes. But I didn't tell him to go home. Okay. So you had a conversation with Phil at seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. And he asked you who Mr. Cooper was. Correct. And during that conversation, you explained to him who Mr. Cooper was. Correct. And then that conversation ended. Correct. And you indicated that you were going to go talk to Mr. Cooper about what Mr. Thomas had already said to you. Correct. Okay. And you indicated that after you talked to Mr. Thomas, you went and talked to Mr. Cooper. Correct. Well, we all were standing together, all three of us. Mr. Wa- Mr. Thomas walked off okay. um, from him having a conversation. I turned to Coop and addressed Coop about the conversation. And that's when he said, look, there's, there's not an issue. Correct. Okay. And so there's no issue. So at some point later, there becomes another incident where Mr. Thomas and Mr. Cooper are in each other's presence. Correct. Okay. And when you are talking about how you're standing, having a conversation with Mr. Cooper, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, Mm -hmm. you guys are at his vehicle, correct? That's the third time, yes. The third time. And the third time the conversation is at the very end of the night. Everything's getting shut down. Well, not necessarily shut down. The party was still going. So about what time was the third incident or the third interaction? It was around between 10 and 11, 12 o'clock, somewhere around the time before we got shot. So we're talking about a two-hour window stand. Correct. I'm, no, that's right. That's right. That's accurate. We was outside that long having a conversation. You and Mr. Thomas were outside yes. that long having a conversation. Correct. Okay. So you guys are outside having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Mr. Thomas is getting ready to leave. No. I'm trying to convince Mr. Thomas to leave. He's at his car? He's at his car looking for his gun. Looking for his gun. Correct. Okay. And it's not... His, his gun is not on his person. Because no. if it was on his person, he he know where it is, correct? Correct. Um, so he's looking in the back of his car for his gun? Yep. Looking for the, in the back, front, side, doors, looking everywhere for his gun. Okay. And I imagine at some point he finds his gun. Correct. Okay. And when he finds his gun, he's leaving, right? No. He so never had an intensive. I don't... I don't I, let me yeah. tell you what I understand the record to be so we don't rehash this. Um, and then you go where you want to go with it. My understanding is, um, uh, Mr. Swain, is that you and Mr. Thomas spent some time at his car 
a couple hours before the shooting when he's looking for his gun because you had heard hey this guy's looking for his gun you went out and engaged with him and said just get in the car just get in the car and leave you know what come back tomorrow we'll find your gun if someone took it life will be better for everyone in 12 hours these are my words not yours but you should leave pretty much mr thomas declined to leave you disengage go back to being the host of the party Fast forward two hours, you and Mr. Thomas are back at the car again. You're actually by the school mm-hmm. having a conversation. That's when Mr. Cooper came up from behind and the shooting happened. Correct. Okay. Okay. I, I was unclear about how many times we were at Mr. Cooper's car. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas's car mm-hmm. before Mr. Cooper approaches it. Okay. Um, so in the second encounter with you standing at Mr. Thomas's car, mm-hmm. that is when... Mr. Cooper approaches, correct? Correct. And he approaches from behind. Behind me, yes. So Mr. Thomas is can see Mr. Cooper approaching. Correct. But you can't. Correct. Okay. Um, so you don't see Mr. Cooper run up. No. You don't see where his hands are as he's coming up. No. You just see Mr. Cooper once he gets to the space that you're in. Correct. Correct. That's when I turned around. Okay. And when Mr. Cooper got to Mr. Phil's, Mr. Thomas's car, Mm -hmm. that is when you try to stop Mr. Cooper, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excuse me. Because Mr. Cooper was coming at Mr. Thomas. No. He was walking up to where where Mr. Thomas was at. I turned around because I had the situation under control. At least I felt. So if his presence is in the area, then he's going to get irritated again. Feel would. And I feel like at that point, I could have talked Phil down probably another two or three minutes to go home. Does that make sense? So if you're irritated with an individual and then that person shows back up, you, if you're at two, you go back to 10. That's your assumption. Correct. correct. Okay. So that's, that's, how, that's how I felt about it. So I thought I had everything under control. If he doesn't show up, everybody goes home. We can talk about this tomorrow morning. But Mr. Cooper did show up. He did. Correct. Okay. And um, you tried to, from what I understand, you tried to grab Mr. Cooper and he told you, nah, get off me. I was just like, yeah, come like, hey, I got this. Like, like, no, step back. I got this. But he didn't step back. No. And all this is taking place within, I guess, feet inches of Mr. Thomas's vehicle. We, I think we're at the front of it, yes. And in that statement, so, okay, let me just back up to your relationships with Mr. Cooper and Mr. Thomas. Correct. Um, so you know both of them, correct? Yes. And you've known both of them for a good amount of time. Yes, Correct. I do. Yes, ma'am. How long have you known um, Mr. Cooper? Mr. Cooper, probably, I think seven, eight years, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And how long have you known Mr. Thomas? Uh, definitely since 2010, for sure. Okay. And um, you would say that you were closer to Mr. Cooper? No, not really. I will give more time towards Mr. Thomas than I would Mr. Cooper. Okay. So the statement that you made as it relates to all of this incident um, back when the incident occurred, um, you indicated that you were standing there having a conversation with Phil and you were trying to calm Phil down, correct? Correct. And you were focused on calming Phil down and not Mr. Cooper, correct? Correct. And at that moment, you were talking to Mr. Thomas. Correct. Okay. And Mr. Thomas wasn't yelling or screaming at you? No. He was ideally calmed, correct? Calm. Okay. And he wasn't yelling back and forth to Mr. Cooper? No. Um, he wasn't spewing threats or anything to Mr. Cooper. No. You all, you and Mr. Thomas were just talking to one another as friends. Correct. Okay. And 
Mr. Thomas was by his own truck, mm-hmm. not by Mr. Cooper's car or vehicle. Correct. Correct. Okay. And your statement to investigator Smallwood was that you were paying attention to Phil, correct? Yes. Okay. And Phil was standing outside of his truck. Yes. Um, with his back to the truck. Yes. Okay. And you were standing kind of like in front of, but to the side of Mr. Thomas, correct? I think I was standing there directly in front of him, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And that means your back was to your house. My back was to the stop sign. My house is to the left. Okay. But you were, so the stop sign is back here. Correct. And your house is kind of like right here. Correct. Okay. And I mean, I, so when you couldn't have seen where Phil's, I mean, I'm sorry, where Mr. Cooper's hands were as he was approaching, correct? Correct. I didn't see him at all. Okay. I told I, I seen literally off of Phil's eyes. That's how I seen him. If someone keeps looking in a certain direction, we have a tendency as people to look that direction. Okay. So Phil did like two or three times. I turned and looked. I didn't see nothing. I turned around and Cooper was behind me, walking up behind me. That's why I was like, no, no, no. I like, I got this under control. He moved me to the side. He was like, what's going on? Okay. And looking at Phil's eyes, he looked concerned? Kind of. Like, yeah, that's, that's him or whatever the case may be. Because at this point, we already know it's an altercation. We already know it's an issue. So, but I'm saying if we, we already know it's an issue, I'm trying to just get the issue. The gentleman shows up that you have an issue with, there's probably going to be another issue. And, but you weren't privy to whatever happened between them earlier in the day. I kind of had an idea what happened to them earlier in the day. You didn't see it? I didn't see it, no. So you heard from somebody else? No, no, no. Didn't hear anything from anybody else. I, don't, I didn't speak on it, and I won't speak on it because I didn't see it. I just knew they had an issue and they had an altercation, period. That's all I know. But you, you know that because either Mr. Cooper or um, Mr. Thomas told you or someone else told you that? I heard other people talking about it. Okay. But everybody didn't know. So say if, if we had 50 people at the party, out of 50 people, probably what five might have known what exactly what happened. Okay. I heard them speak about it. Again, I was hosting the party. Whatever they had, they had. Yep. They dealt with it. I already addressed the situation earlier at like 7, 7.30. They got back into it. Why they got back into it, that I don't know. Why you got other people involved, that I do not know. How do we go from that altercation to someone being shot around 12 o'clock, that I still don't know. So I'm lost on all altogether. Okay. And so Coop is now behind you. Correct. And you're in front of Phil. Yes. And... You indicate that you see Phil raise his gun. Yes. And when you say raise his gun, he brings it up. Yes. Uh, Cooper's not shot in the chest, is he? No. He's not shot in the head, is he? Correct. He's not really shot in the upper body, correct? I don't think it knows Adam, like ab, ab area. Down here. Correct. And you'd agree that... Um, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Thomas are about the same height. I'm not sure. Probably, what, 5'11", 5, 5'10", 5, 6 feet? I'm not sure. But they're roughly, no one towers over the other. Not that I can think of. And where do you compare? Are you about the same height as those two guys? I probably am, 6 feet. Okay. Um, but on direct, you also said to Cooper, hey, I got this. And Cooper was like, nah. Correct. So, Coop, you couldn't stop Cooper. And at that time, no. By the time I moved Coop out the way, when well, Coop moved me out the way, excuse me, Coop was being shot. What was that to stop? Okay, but you, so, and I'm just going to go back to what you described. Mm-hmm. You're standing directly in front of Mr. Thomas. Correct. And Coop comes up from behind. Correct. And he moved you out the way. No, I turned to Coop and look at Coop like, hey, I got this. Then Coop's to push me to the side, and then Coop, I guess, engages Mr. Thomas. So when you turn, mm-hmm. are you turning and moving, or are you just you're here and you do this? I'm turning, I'm moving, and I'm like, I'm like trying to like just hey, calm down. I got this. Okay. Second, the situation's taken care of. Okay, but 
and doing that, turning and moving, uh-huh. Cooper doesn't stop. He's still coming to Mr. Thomas. Correct. Okay. And um, also, also during um, that interview with Detective Smallwood, mm-hmm. you indicated that you don't think Phil meant to shoot you. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you weren't Phil's target. Correct. If I spent two hours outside talking to him, we had no altercation. No, he didn't intend to shoot me at all. Not at all. Um, previously, um, prior to today's testimony in court, um, and probably I think it was sometime closer to the incident date, you had a conversation with someone that worked in my office. Correct. Who? You you spoke to. Um, Mr. Thomas's attorney or one of his attorneys at some point. Probably did. Because I'm not saying that I don't support so many people from field side or other people. I don't, I don't know. I'm not being funny. I'm sorry. I don't know. But I probably did. You probably did. Okay. Um, and in that conversation that you probably had, you talked about how you have a civil case pending and you mm-hmm. are looking to get paid for your injuries, correct? Judge, I'm going to object to relevance. No, I, I'm looking for a response. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I heard um, Your Honor, I think it goes to the credibility of the witness in this testimony. Okay. You can keep asking. Okay. Well, yes, I do. But I haven't filed a civil suit towards Mr. Thomas. Okay. You said you have not? No. So your statement was, I haven't um, filed a lawsuit yet. Correct. But you do have an attorney. I do not. At this time, you don't have an attorney? No, I do not. Okay. Um, but when you spoke to the, individ- or the individual. I was, I was speaking to, I, have, I was speaking to, and I have spoken to several attorneys that I asked to represent me in a civil suit. No one has represented me. No one will represent me. Okay. Um, and... Let me just back up to that conversation that you were having with Mr. Thomas for two hours outside. Mm-hmm. Where was this young lady that you were trying to court? She's probably on, on the house. I mean, at the house, on the patio, doing whatever she was doing. I'm not sure at that time. That but wasn't were, my focus. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's, I'm, I'm not sure. But you were so busy trying to get back to her, you were able to spend two hours outside with Phil talking? At that point, I was focused on the situation at hand. I didn't tell me what was going on. She had nothing to do with anything. So on, I just want to clarify, because I'm confused mm-hmm. about these two conversations, these two long conversations you had with Phil outside. Okay. So you had one two-hour conversation with him, mm-hmm. and then you had another two-hour conversation with him. No, we went inside that long, no. Okay. But you, you did have a conversation with him before all of this happened? Yes. Okay. No further questions at this time. Okay, I have a couple areas I want to cover with you, and then we'll see if there's any redirect. Yes. Um, my understanding from your testimony is, in effect, you had three conversations with Mr. Thomas. You may have seen him a bunch of times that night, right. but there was the one where you and he and Mr. Cooper around seven o'clock. He's mm-hmm. like, "Hey, who's this Cooper guy?" And you're like, hey, he's all right. And, right. and Mr. Thomas wandered off, and you spoke with Mr. Cooper. He says, "It's all good." Right. You take them at their word, you're doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few hours and you find yourself with Mr. Thomas at his car. Mm -hmm. You've already heard word that Mr. Thomas is looking to get his gun. He's still mad about things. You're trying to get him to leave. He can't find his gun. He's looking all around. That exchange you had with Mr. Thomas out of his car, the first of two that you had out of his car, are you saying that that lasted for two hours or it was about two hours before the shooting? No, it had lasted for two hours. You and he went back and forth. Like we was outside, whether he was calling someone on the phone, whether I was trying to calm him down, okay. whatever the case may be, that window, that span of window was about a two hour window. It was long. Yes. Okay. About how much time, give or take, was there from when that ended and there was that second conversation with him at the side of his car? when 
Coop showed up, or was that all part of the all, same all tour? Of, excuse me, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. My apologies. It's okay. All of us pretty much together, like Got one it. long, long span. Okay, so you were still in the course of encouraging um, Mr. Thomas to leave when, at the very end of, ended because you got shot. Uh, at the very end, Mr. Cooper showed up. Correct. That would have been part of it. Just it was at the back end. Correct. Okay. Got it. Um, did you hear Mr. Cooper yelling anything about killing anyone or I should have killed you or I'm going to kill you as Mr. Cooper was approaching you and Mr. Thomas at the very end of the night at your house? No. If I did, I would have probably turned around before just reading Mr. Thomas' eyes. Okay. And you were always closer to Mr. Cooper than Mr. Thomas was because you were in between... Mr. Cooper, as he approached, even though you didn't know he was approaching, and Mr. Thomas. Correct. So anything Mr. Cooper saying is effectively going by your ears all the way to Mr. Thomas, if Mr. Cooper was saying anything. Correct. All right. Last area for me. Um, you ultimately are shot. You told me you reach out, grab the fence, and slide down. About how far were you and Mr. Cooper from Mr. Thomas when he pointed the gun at Mr. Cooper and shot him. I'm thinking a couple of feet, maybe a, like a car length. Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's probably at the back passenger door or the back of his vehicle and, and Cooper was at the front. Sure. And I was to the side, um, like I guess the sidewalk where I was shot at. Could you or Mr. Cooper have reached out and touched Mr. Thomas at the time the shot was fired or was he further away than that? I, no, I, de I definitely couldn't have. Okay. Like at all. Like he was nowhere near me. Okay. For me, in order for me to touch him. All right. And what's your recollection as to whether Mr. Cooper was so close or not so close to um, Mr. Thomas that he could have reached out and touched him? Not that he did, but that's how close they were. Mr. Cooper was not as, when he got shot, I don't think he was close to him as arm reach, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Costello, do you have any other questions for Mr. Swain? I don't think so, Judge. All right. Um, Ms. Hawkins, may um, Mr. Swain be excused? No, Your Honor. I have a follow-up I have follow up to the questions that you just asked him. Fair enough. Okay. Um, Mr. Swain, yes. you indicated that, I think what I heard you say was that Mr. Cooper was not within arm's reach of Mr. Thomas when he was shot. Correct. But didn't you indicate that you were standing directly in front of Mr. Thomas and y'all were talking. Correct. And when Mr. Uh, Cooper was, when you recognized that he was there, he was on your back. He's right here behind you. Correct. You turned around. Correct. And you tried to stop him. Mm -hmm. You couldn't stop him. He kept coming. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Thomas is still standing right here. I guess so. I don't know what Mr. Thomas was at that point, as far as the distance. Nothing All right. Um, may Mr. Swain be excused? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Swain, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Who's your next witness, Mr. Castillo? Call Brian York to the stand, Judge. Okay. And just patrol officer, do you often have to respond to Grady Hospital for a myriad of reasons? I've had to go there many, many times. Yes, sir. And I want to draw your attention to the early morning hours of May 16th of 2021. Uh, do you recall assisting on a person shot call? Yes, sir. Can you tell the judge kind of how you got involved in this case? Uh, so I was at Grady Hospital. Uh, I had apprehended a gentleman who got rejected at the city jail. Normally when they're intoxicated, they won't let them in. So they take them to, there's a jail in Grady. Uh, so I was on my way home, walking out. And as I'm walking out, uh, cars pulled up and people were frantic and you could tell a situation had happened and uh, it's my duty to be involved. So I did my best I could to help. Wrong place, wrong time for you. It's the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so so during this, uh, this scene over at Grady Hospital, did you learn that there were uh, two individuals shot in a single incident? Yes, sir. And uh, was that initial incident location at 688 South Elizabeth Place? We did find that out uh, eventually. And is that located in Fulton County? Yes, sir. And 688 South Elizabeth Place, is that in zone two? No, sir. 
Where is that located? I believe it's in zone one on the west side. Um, now, while you're outside of Grady and there's this commotion going on and there are people shot, did you have an opportunity uh, to interview um, the defendant in this case, Mr. Phil Thomas? Yes, sir. And this is at 80 Jesse Hill Jr. Drive? Yes, sir. Um, can you tell us what happened uh, during your interaction? So after everything had calmed down, the paramedics and hospital staff had uh, gotten the people who needed medical care, you know, towards where they could triage them. Uh, I was trying to figure out what happened. I had no idea anything. Uh, so I was speaking to everyone as if they were witnesses. And so uh, that's the first person I went and spoke to is the, my understanding at the time was that he was operating the vehicle. I saw uh, identification in the vehicle of the defendant. And so I just went to ask him what happened. I, I had no knowledge of anything of the whole incident. So I was just trying to figure out so I could get information across to other officers. And as an Atlanta police officer, uh, were you equipped with a body worn camera? Yes, sir. And are those cameras used to actively record police citizen encounters? Yes, sir. And did you have your body worn camera recording uh, during this interaction with Mr. Thomas? I did. Your Honor, I'm showing uh, defense counsel what's been marked as state's exhibit one. Uh, Mr. York. And you must be marked the state's exhibit one. Do you recognize this disc? Yes, sir. What is it? It's the uh, footage of my body worn camera from that morning. And you've had an opportunity to review it? Yes, sir. And are there any material alterations or deletions to it? No, sir. And is this a fair and accurate representation of uh, what you were a part of at Brady Hospital on May 16th of 2021? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, the state would tender states one in evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. States one is admitted. And you said previously that you had that conversation with Mr. Thomas about what was going on. Uh, was he considered in custody, in your opinion? No, sir. Was he ever restrained physically? No, sir. Was he ever threatened or coerced? No, sir. Uh, did he freely and voluntarily give you a statement? Yes, sir. Did you ever read him his Miranda rights? No. Nope. Is there a particular reason why? I didn't consider him to be in custody at the time that I was talking to him. And Your Honor, at this time, the state would request um, to publish a portion of Mr. York's, or at the time, Officer York's body camera. I can uh, proffer to the court the entire length of this body cam is 75 minutes long. However, uh, the statement the state is seeking to publish is approximately nine minutes. Okay. Um, and uh, you're free to publish whatever part you want, um, whether it's Ms. Foster or Ms. Hawkins. Um, I'm happy to hear other parts today or to be directed towards other parts or grudgingly to be told, watch all 75 minutes. Cause I'll, I'll do that if that's what we need to do to get the whole context. But certainly um, you can play your nine minutes um, if you are sharing video with audio, and clearly the audio is the important part here since it's a statement, make sure you check the little box when you're sharing screen in the lower, I think it's the lower left-hand corner, but there are a couple little boxes that say share audio. Make sure you do that um, so that it flows through the system. And that's D1. I mean, that's and I don't see your machine on here. Ms. Jackson's is, are you... We've got Ms. Franks, Ms. Jackson. Oh, you're there. You are. You're on there. Never mind. I didn't signify ADA. No, no, no. I just I I missed it. It's right there. Who's Ms. Franks? She's with our office, Your Honor. Oh, okay. All right. Just for the record, I'm going to nine minute, 45 second mark of this uh, body cam. Can you start at 9.34 or 9.30? 9.30, 9.30. 
Yeah. I can, I can start at 930. Or how about 928 because it's easier to get my mouse there. 928. Doesn't just ghost us, but we need to make the car the crime scene say so never don't let him go in at all. Because he's possibly a suspect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lana. Because based on our transcript, I don't know if he jumped. Did you skip that part? Take it right to, you want me to take it back to 923? I mean, this based on what you sent us, it's at 9 So I, I just want to get that part in. Ten foot, correct? Oh, you do have to yes. Okay, I'm going to stay next to him so he doesn't just ghost us. Mm -hmm. But we need to make the car the crime scene so oh. never don't let him go in at all. Because oh. he's possibly a suspect. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come down to Grady, dog, right now. All right. I'll let that go. Yes, sir. What? I'll see you. Okay. We was at him. And that's the only weapon you had. I saw your carry license. No. That's my carry license. You don't have one on you? No. 20 okay. year veteran. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Everything that's said. Uh, we're going to just hold the car as a, the, the supervisor <laughs> wants to hold the car for do now. Any, so, what, what happened today, do sir? Any and everything you need to do. We had a situation. We was at a barbecue yes, sir. today. We was at a barbecue. And what happened? Everybody was getting ready to leave with fraternities and everything else. Attitudes started shifting. This gentleman, I don't even know this guy from a bucket of paint. This gentleman started popping off at some of my chapter bros. Yes, sir. My chapter bros, Officer York, approximately 50, 60 chapter bros. But the gentleman that was popping off, in difference to my chapter bros, is also our fraternity brother, different chapter. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, at that point, stuff got out of hand. I checked him. Somebody else had words from me. Everybody about to disperse in front of And the school is... This will give you an idea where we at. The school is John Lewis Academy. You said John Lewis Middle School. Bankhead. Yes, sir. Right yeah. Bank yeah. Okay. And you guys Elizabeth. were you guys were on Elizabeth. Yeah, at the mm -hmm. house right mm -hmm. across the street. Doing the barbecue thing. Yes, all us chapter bros, we've been doing barbecues at that house and for the principal of John Lewis for years. Yes, sir. Before the John Lewis, it was uh, Ben Carson. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now. So we there, this, that, and the third. So the guy kept popping off. Me and the guy had words. Him, the guy and other people had words. So I'm like, hey man, this is not the function. You're not part of this chapter. Though you part of our fraternity, this is not the function for this, this, and the third. Prior to that, I talked, and the phone records will show if y'all pull them. I talked to some of his chapter bros, like, this ain't cool. Let this go, boom, boom, boom. Everybody's starting to leave. I get my gun, put it in the front seat. Where it is right now. Got a retired military. Got my paperwork for the cab county. Yes, sir. And everything else, this, that, and the third. I saw your carry license. I'm an educator. I'm a social athletic director for Morehouse College. Very good. I'm a model. So I'm doing everything, this, that, and the third. So we get in the car. This guy still having beef talking shit to everybody. I'm like, dude, that's not even necessary. I fuck you up, this, that, nigga, I kill you. Was everyone intoxicated or? First of all, not it's everyone. Okay. It's okay. 50%. A lot of 50%. A big group. Or I'm like, dude, that's I'm, not even necessary. talking about the people in the Okay. Yeah. You are Phil Thomas. Yes, sir. This guy coming, I'm taking, I'm like, where's my gun? I'm taking my gun, putting it in the front seat. 
taking my charger from the house, put my charger in the front seat, put my towel in the front seat. Everybody, you wait to you. But the video, oh, not the volume. I mean, it, it's not syncing up exactly. Is there body movement that's essential, or is it the audio? No, I just want to make sure that it wasn't just us. Yeah, Fine. no, it's it's our system. Okay. I mean, it's probably his computer. But... Go ahead. I don't have an objection. I just want to make sure. Okay. He rushes talking all this loud stuff. I fuck you up. This, 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 and that. Honestly. Everybody back so like, who this guy? He's saying all this, and I'm like, no. It ain't that type of party. Let that go. He rushed me in self-defense. I'm like, yo. And I point my gun at him with the discharge. He drops. Everybody scatters. I'm being transparent. So I he said, was rushing you. He rushed me at the Elizabeth. To fight you or? Fight, harm, whatever the case may be. He's What were you rushing. thinking when he came at you? He was trying to harm me. Okay. I had my gun, my this charger, my cell phone, my car keys. Dude, what are you doing? Fuck you. You this, that. You ain't shit. I kill you, nigga. Whoa. Bam. Put, did that. Wait a minute. Drop this, drop my car keys. How you doing? You good? I'm good? Yeah. Hey, drop my car keys, drop this, drop my phone on the ground. Whoa, what the fuck? After I discharge. Um, 12 o'clock. My frat brother, Swain, that we put in my truck to bring here, over here. At nine o'clock. Yeah, o'clock. just got out of the bed. Yeah, he's at nine o'clock. Right beside you. I don't know what happened. I'm at twelve o'clock with this knucklehead. And you're zoomed in on. I don't know what happened at nine o'clock. Everybody started to scream, this, that, and the third. My twelve o'clock is the gentleman. Somebody grabbed him and they disappeared. I'm like, man, that's fucking bullshit. At my nine o'clock, I see my frat brother. I eat my minty. Swain, what the fuck? Everybody like, what happened? We don't know. So when you turned around, what did you see? We just saw him balled up okay. in the fetal position. You didn't hear anything? It's completely normal. Auditory we grabbed speech. him. You're in a stressful thing. Me and the gentleman that rode with me, Jamal Carter, we all frat brothers. We grabbed him. He's a school teacher like myself. We put him in the back of my car. We come straight here. And I did see We him. come straight here. See, I don't even work the area that this happened in, we but I saw that, that people were in route here. We come straight here, because I don't know what happened to him. When he got hit in the leg, that's the artery spot. He's 9 o'clock. Yep. At 12 o'clock, saw this guy rushing me and the guy that was in the driver, the passenger side with me. Motherfucker, do you cur I kill you. I got my weapon, my charger, my not escape. I'm, I'm reaching for my, I'm, yep. I'm not saying you that tight. I'm just reaching. I got well, I saw one, your gun in there, unless you're, two, unless three. You're John Wick. No, I got three items and my gun. And then that in that pocket. What's, I got, in, what's in that pocket? Oh, this is all of my no gun ID in there. cards. No, all my ID cards showing military this and that. All right, so look, I gave look, this. What's 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 your first name, sir? My name is Philip. Philip. Can, Philip Thomas. Can I call you Mr. Thomas or is Philip okay? Whatever you feel I'm comfortable. I'm gonna go with Mr. Thomas done. because I'm a, Thomas. I'm, I'm a a Southern guy. Yeah, I'm I, Thomas. I All right, so here's, we we put the guy. Here's what the from thing my is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me. I, I understand it. Yes, sir. All right, now I'm gonna do this the right way as long as you keep doing it the right way with me, okay? I have no problem. With right that. now you're gonna be not under arrest, but yes. you're gonna be detained. You are not. Fine. You're not free to go Fine. because this has got to get investigated. Fine. Now you're acting good with me, so I'm not Fine. even going to put you in handcuffs to detain Fine. you because we got your gun over there. Fine. But I'm going to hang with you until we figure out what we want to do with and the I person who's investigating. All that is fine. That guy that's walking up in that cargo shorts and that purple shirt rode with me he to bring with? our fraternity brother to Grady. Can you call him over here? Too? Yeah. Does he carry him? No. He's a retired soldier like me. And that's okay. I love guns. Yeah. Are cool. Jamal. Someone. Jamal!
Someone? And for the record, Judge, I'm going to stop the recording at the 18 minute mark on the dot. Mr. York, uh, that was uh, the recording of the statement that you took from the defendant. Yes. And uh, at any point in time, did he ever mention anything about someone's hand being behind their back? No. Did he ever motion that his hands, uh, that somebody's hands were behind their back? No. After you took a statement from Mr. Thomas, what else did you do to assist in the investigation? Anything I could, just try to make myself useful to try to help uh, answer any questions anyone had. Uh, maybe wait till any investigators were coming so I could just make sure that it was as thorough as possible. And can you just uh, kind of explain how the Atlanta police process is uh, for investigating a person shot call generally? When it escalates to that level, there's special investigative units that would investigate either aggravated assaults or, or if it rose to the level of homicide, the special investigators would come. Uh, and in the way that we work, it's generally once you find out it's something along those lines, you kind of shut everything down and, and wait for them to come so that they can do everything the right way. And in this case, did you transfer responsibility to uh, another investigator? At that time, I believe, uh, just on my recollection, I transferred it to the zone one officers arriving. Um, and it, it would have been their case from the beginning. Uh, and I just tried to make myself useful for any statements and, and anything along those lines. Okay. I think that's all I have for now, Judge. Okay. So it's a zone one case because Elizabeth Street is in zone one. I think you're actually in zone five at Grady. Yes, you were there because in zone two, you had picked up someone who you tried to take to jail, but he was sufficiently inebriated. He had to dry out at Grady. And you were Johnny on the spot. You walked out and this situation presents itself, um, but you are ready to hand it over to zone one. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Ms. Foster? Very briefly, Your Honor. Um, officer, well, you're not an officer anymore. You build houses. I might need to talk to you after this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in your conversation with Philip Thomas, uh, he mentioned several times that the person that attacked, that, that he shot, said he was going to kill him, correct? Yes, ma'am, I did hear that. And uh, you also spoke with the Jamal Carter? I do not recall. Um, um, and in fact, Mr. Thomas said several times that he was at his car um, and this Mr. Cooper, the person who was, the, who was shot, rushed him and had told him several times he was going to kill him, correct? Yes, ma'am. I heard him say that. Okay. No further questions, Judge. All right. Mr. Costello, any redirect? No redirect, Judge. All right. Um, may Ms. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Cooper. Thank you for being here today. If you could just do me a favor when you do um, answer any questions today, just make sure you lean real close to the mic. You got to make sure that the court reporter can hear you, Judge, everybody on Zoom. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cooper, what city and state do you currently live in? Dallas, Texas. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a pilot, uh, private private jet pilot. And do you have any particular ties to fraternities? I do. I'm a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And are you tied to any particular chapter? I am uh, the Mu Mu Mu, aka the Tri Mu chapter of Omega Psi Phi, which is here in West Atlanta. And can you describe for the court uh, how you know Christopher Swain? Uh, through the fraternity, Christopher Swain, he was involved in my process in becoming a brother of Omega Sapphire. And when I was uh, a neophyte or a new, a new initiate into the fraternity, he, you know, he held my hand through, through it all. So. And how long have you known Mr. Swain? What's it, 2023? 11 years. Do you have any relationship uh, with a Mr. Phil Thomas? No. I want to draw your attention to May 15th of 2021. Uh, do you recall a particular incident that occurred on that day? I do. Um, I want to start out with. Um, how you got to Atlanta that weekend. 
Well, I had uh, I just graduated from grad school that Friday, and I wanted to come home, so I came home. And when you say uh, home, are you originally from yes. Atlanta? Yes. And when you came home for the weekend, uh, what were your plans? Uh, no, no real plans. Uh, get around. That was really post COVID. I had just just exited from the Marine Corps, so I wanted to uh, just touch base. Say hi. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. And when you were in Atlanta for the weekend, what were your lodging plans? Well, I was staying with with Swain like I would normally do. Um, you know, if we get too too intoxicated or, or anything, or if it just gets too late, uh, then I would stay with Swain. If not, I stay with another family member in in East Atlanta. So it's really a matter of convenience. But a lot of times, my stuff would just stay at Swain's. And is uh, Swain's house located at 688 South Elizabeth Place? Yes, sir. Is that located in Fulton County? Yes, sir. Uh, so while you're staying at Swain's house for the weekend, uh, were there any particular events that happened at his house? Absolutely. So I received, um, I received a notification that Swain was just going to have a, um, a barbecue and just come by. And uh, the, you know, short term planned and we came by. When you say we, who's we? I apologize. Uh, myself, I had uh, some more returning members with me, a couple family members, uh, just a small little gang of us. That's it. Do you, okay. If you need to know the names. No, 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 no. But I, I want to know if it was the royal we or if there was a group you were moving around with. And it sounds like it was some fraternity brothers and then their family members or your family members? Mine. So you were, they are family members of yours in Atlanta, and that was partly who you were coming to see, or they had come with you into town? No, they live here. Got it. Yes, sir. And do you recall what time this barbecue started at? I don't know what time it started. I just know what time I arrived. And what time did you arrive? Around 7 o'clock. And was there any particular reason why Swain was having a barbecue this day? I don't know why he had one, but... I have no idea why he had one. Maybe because the sun came up and it was warm that day. I have no idea. Um, so you recall being involved in a few incidents at this party? Yes, sir. So, and, and there's more than one incident. Correct. And I, I want to make sure that we break it down so it's clear for the court to understand. Um, can we talk about the very first negative encounter you may have had at this party. Yes, I was. I'm standing outside, and Swain's chapter, uh, which is Phi Kappa Kappa PKK, they had new initiates. I'm out of the state, so I didn't know anything. I didn't even know this happened. So when I found out, I was excited. You know, we we make new initiates together as chapters, right? And I went outside, and I was standing outside, right outside the door, and I and I said, I said specifically, I said, hey. Hey, Neos, Coop, that's my name. Come over, let's, let's talk. And that's when I was approached by Phil Thomas. I didn't know him. So he just starts talking. And age isn't, isn't a thing when you're on a, a graduate level. It's not like undergrad. Everybody's the same age, right? So uh, I, I didn't know who he was. And he just starts talking to me. And I'm like, hey, well, are you a Neo? Because that's who I just asked for. And then eventually he revealed that he wasn't a Neo, uh, neophyte. And, you know, he had crossed uh, 20 years ago. And then he starts berating me saying that I was out of line. I was out of order. And I was confused because I, I, I wasn't, uh, I had no idea what he was talking about. Uh, from that point, it kind of, it kind of escalated. He started making, making it a little bit more personal as far as my chapter was concerned. Okay. Uh, and I just want to stop you uh, yes, real sir. quick right there, Mr. Cooper. So you said that you, you were engaging these Neos, the new guys. Mm -hmm. What was your what? What do you recall your demeanor being uh, when you were trying to engage these individuals? I had a smile on my face. It was a party. I was happy to see them. Uh, we're happy to meet them. You know, I didn't know they existed. I just found out literally because I met one right prior to that. I, I met one. Uh, yeah, I just met him, and that's one. That's how I found out. I'm like, hey, I, I don't know you. Who are you? And he told me. I said, hey, wait. 2021 you just got here he said yes i was like so there's more of you it's like yeah there's more of us well like, oh, i gotta go meet everybody so that's when i went outside i raised my hands and i said come on let's meet mr cooper is there anything 
that would offend the sensibilities of a member of one chapter to have someone in another chapter telling neos what to do. So these were PKK neos, not trimu neos. Yes, sir. Correct. You're, I'm trimu. You're trimu. So you're a different chapter. You're all omega. Um, and so there are many, many shared traits and connections and, and whatnot, but you're a trimu and you're telling PKK neos or asking however we want to call it, but, but because they're neos and you're not in theory, I'm guessing they, they ought to respond to your request or your directive. Is there any tradition that, wait a minute, that's not your chapter. So you're out of line. No, sir. It is not. It's actually customary that, it, you know, to go go out to other chapters to meet other chapters. You could be an Omega from Alaska and you're here in Georgia and um, like, hey, there's some Neos here. I want to meet you guys. Line Absolutely. Up. Absolutely. Because because the model of our fraternity is friendship is essential to the soul. So the fraternity is, was founded and based on friendship. The only way you can make a friend is if you get to know someone. And uh, you said you arrived at about 7 p.m. At what time are you engaging the Neos? Oh, um, I didn't really get, get that far, actually. Um, it, it was pretty instant, 7, 7.30, right, around there. And you said a few moments ago that uh, Mr. Phil Thomas and you uh, had some sort of exchange. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that exchange. And th that was it. He um, uh, apparently, I didn't know, but he had a history with making uh, speculation. He said he has a history. I'm supposed to say hearsay. Okay, I'd go more with the hearsay. Um, so why don't you rephrase the question? And maybe you can get there, but maybe not. So um, before you answer um, Mr. Costello's next question, let me hear what it is because Ms. Foster may have another objection. Yes, sir. So let me back up just a bit. Um, so you and Mr. Thomas had gotten into a negative exchange, just sticking to what occurred between you and Mr. Thomas? Tell us what happened. Well, he just, he, 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 he had berated me. He had told me I was out of, out of line and out of order. Uh, and it really came out of left field. And he started to run down my chapter history as far as how we were founded. Um, and he got really disrespectful about that, uh, just, just in his words. And at that point, I, I was totally confused because it, it, it was just an odd situation. Um, an odd interaction. It wasn't normal. And that's when Swain walked over and that's when Swain walked over and, I, and I'm like, hey, what, 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 what's up with this guy? Because I know I knew they were chapter brothers. I knew that. And that's when Swain said, you know, hey, Coop, just just go away. He's 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 tripping. Go away. So I walked away. So uh, that was how this first encounter between you and Phil Thomas resolved. Correct. The two of you were separated. Correct. And this was just an argument. Correct. And uh, just to, to give the court a timeline, what, how long did that argument take? No more than 10 minutes. So at this party, uh, was there alcohol being consumed? Yes, sir. Do you know if there was any drug use going on? Not to my knowledge. And did you consume any alcohol? Yes. About how much? What, what time of the night for the entire night or let's um let's go from your arrival time at 7 p.m till about midnight i say a few cups of what of a uh, liquor okay but like an entire cup of moonshine no, or sir. is a little bit of rum and a lot of coke or uh 25 percent of of whiskey with some lemonade, lemonade and Sprite. You were, what do you call that? Some people call it whiskey sour. Okay. Yes, sir. No sour. You put ice in that? Absolutely not. At some point while you're at this barbecue, did you have another engagement uh, with Mr. Thomas? I did. About what time was that at? estimating around nine the sun the sun had just set and it, um it was dark so about nine o'clock nine nine fifteen nine thirty. Yeah, right and uh, tell the court what happened in this we'll call it the, the second interaction 
Um, well, it, how can I put this? It was something that happened before then, in between. So, so in between the hey, you're out of line for calling on the neos, and the second, there's something that happened in between that. Yes. Okay. Um, and it, it was just very minute as far as people were coming to me uh, saying that that hey, why do you have a you know what's going on with you, you and Phil going back and forth, and I stated several times to people, I don't have a problem with Phil. I don't know Phil. Like, I'm good. I don't. This is not an issue for me. And it just continued to escalate, escalate, escalate to where more people were grabbing me and pulling me aside, trying to defuse a situation that I wanted, wanted no parts of. And that's, and that, that's what leads us to the second part. So I, uh, a profile of mine has said, came to me and said, hey, uh, you know, what's, what's going on with you, you and Phil? I told him, nothing, right? But when it got to him, that's when I knew it was a lot of going back and forth between people. So now to our third and, I, and I'm sorry. So I did, I, I saw Phil and I said, hey, like, what's your problem with me? Why do, like, why do, you, keep, why do you keep bothering me? And, and he didn't say anything. He just smirked at me. He didn't say a word. And that was that. So now- So, so we have a, a second interaction. Yes. You've gotten some information flowing through the party. You approach Mr. Thomas mm -hmm. and there's essentially one word, two words spoken between you two, mm -hmm. a smirk and you disengage. Right, that was it, All right? And then from there, my pro fight, the guy who made me into the fight, who's my chapter brother, uh, he's older. He, he said, hey, what's going on with you and Phil? Nothing. I, I don't have a problem with Phil. He has a problem with me. You all need to handle that. I don't know the guy. That's when they wanted to have an intervention, which leads to about the 9 o'clock, 9, 9, 30, around that time, after sunset. And they, they, which is a normal thing. If two brothers have a problem, uh, you, you go talk about it away from people using discretion, right? So that's what happened. We went to the side of the house and I assumed at first it was, it was myself and uh, my pro fight. I thought he, 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 can you, you, what is the specific word you're using? A, I'm sorry, a pro fight. So you have, um, how do you spell that? P R O P H Y T. -E. Okay. And that's the person who got, who, who, Pledged you? Yes, sir. Got so it. he's he's before me. My neophytes are after me. Got it. Oh, okay. So neophyte pro fight is before you. And that's not the guy's name. That would be a title or an Correct. honorific Correct. that you give him. Correct. Uh, he, his name could be Steve Jones. But Absolutely. His connection to you through the fraternity is he is your pro fight. Correct. And, and so you and your pro fight are going as part of this intervention. Correct. Okay. I didn't know that this was an intervention. He just called me to the side of the house. He said, hey, Coop, come, come talk to me. He was in the army, so we talk, right? And next thing I know, I see some PKK brothers come over, and I see Phil. And I said, oh, I said, oh, hell, I know what this is. I, and I, because by then, I was irritated because people kept bothering me trying to stop. And that's why I didn't have, uh, I was still sober, um, and I didn't have a lot to drink because people kept stopping my progress to party, right? And... I told him, I don't want to do this. This is crazy. I don't, I don't want to talk to him. Like he's been bothering me all night. I don't want to talk to him. This is stupid. This is not a we problem. This is a him problem. You all need to fix this. And so in Omega, we had deference. So if you're older, if, well, if, if you're younger, you, you yield to older brothers, right? Deference. So I crossed it said earlier, other than when you're in school, age doesn't really matter. Um, but and I was about to say that, you know, I promise the uh, the crossing year always matters. OK, so I'm I'm 2012. I crossed in 2012. OK, so you could cross at the same time as a guy who's 99. And really what's relevant is when you cross. Someone Correct. who crossed in 2011 is your senior. Correct. He could be 10 years younger than you, but he crossed before you. So Absolutely. you owe him deference. You show him deference. Absolutely. Because he, his crossing age is older. Yes, sir. Okay. So I was 2012. My pro fight, uh, my chapter brother, he, he's uh, 07, 2007. And then uh, to my knowledge, Phil is 2002. So my pro fight basically just told me, shut up. Like he just said, look, shut up. Like, we're going to work this out. But I, I was adamant because I knew that I, I, had, I didn't know him. I hadn't do, I hadn't do anything. So yeah, fine. Deference kicked in. I didn't say anything. The moment I stopped saying anything, 
because I well, I, I said this is stupid, but I'll listen. I hear it out. That's when Phyllis began to call me out my name, berate me, type of MFers, N words, things that I like. I don't, I don't, I don't communicate that way. I don't call us N words. That's that's not my thing. So, and everyone knows that. So uh, I take great exception to that. Uh, and and that's when I told them, hey, this is like I told y'all, he has a problem with me. This is stupid. So I proceed to walk away. But how they had, how how they were in, in in West Atlanta, the old houses, right? You had the backyards, and then you have a little small piece of the side yard that's fenced in. I was on the interior of that, next to the AC machine. So when I walked away, I walked toward the front of the house, which was fenced in. So I couldn't walk away. So as I walk away, uh, and I remember very vividly, this is when Phil called me out my name again. He called me a, a bitch ass N word again. And this MF for this and this MF for that. And I had about had it at that point. I'm like, hey, what, what, what's really going on? And so uh, basically a drink, he threw a drink on me, right? Uh, because we had set our drinks on the AC machine. All right. So he threw a drink on me. Uh, and that's why I took a step forward. I'm not about to have anybody just throw a drink on me. So when I took a step forward, he tackled me. Right. He tackled me and he tackled me. But the AC machine, I had stepped in front of the AC machine. And, and so the, air, yeah, the, the AC machine. So when he tackled me, I, uh, I just rolled back and I put him in a cradle. Uh, it, Can you describe what a cradle is? Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, a, it's a, a lower mount. So I'm on my back. He's on top of me, uh, almost like a missionary position. I wrapped my, it's a jujitsu. I, I wrapped my legs around his, around his, his, uh, his ribs and I put him in a front headlock. Um, and then I, uh, I mean, that's, that's what happened. So I put him in a front headlock. And my intention wasn't to, worst case scenario, when you put somebody in this position, they will go to sleep. All right. You can, you can, you can put them to sleep via a blood choke. That's not my intention. I didn't want to do that because that's not, that's not, it's just not healthy. I didn't know him. So if you put people to sleep and their body can't take it, then it's a problem. They may not wake up. That would be a problem. Yes, sir. Um, and that, that was not my intention. Not, not only was it not my intention as a person um, and as a, as a military professional, it wasn't my intention as a fraternity brother, because regardless of what static that we had, what issues we had, uh, he was still my fraternity brother. In our fraternity, what you don't do is, you know, you don't, you don't punch, you don't stab, you don't shoot, you don't do anything like that. Uh, you, you can wrestle. Uh, that's, that's acceptable as long as it's, it's discretionary. Now, publicly, um, that's not Omega. That's not what we publicly do or what the fraternity publicly condones. But that is a part of the frat that does exist nonetheless. All right. So from that point, I realized I, I realized I, had, you know, I I knew what was going on. I realized I had him, so I let him go. Again, I wasn't trying to put him to sleep. So and I told him in his ear, I said, "Just leave me alone. Like, just leave me alone." Um, I let him go. His chapter brothers grabbed him, and I stood up. I dusted myself off, and I went inside the house. So, would you say that was how this third interaction? resolved with Mr. Thomas. It starts out as an intervention and it basically ends with you having him in some sort of jujitsu hold. Correct. And, and, and to that end, that's normally the end up. That's why I dusted myself off. I walked away. I didn't go into the house and say, hey, look at me. I'm the champion. You know, that's, that's, that's bad form and poor taste uh, because that violates discretion. So I didn't say anything to anybody. Whoever was on that side of the house, I didn't say anything to anybody. Um, what does your pro fight do when you, he's telling you to be quiet and then you, you're choking this guy out. That's your pro fight. Mm -hmm. I assume you're supposed to follow his advice. At that point, I didn't hear him. He was off to the side. I didn't hear him. I, it, it wasn't, you didn't really care what he was saying. Right. No one could. It's not that I didn't care. I didn't hear him if he had said anything at all. And it wasn't a, I was in a position to where people can pull me off. Why? Because I'm on my back. He's on top of me. And it's an AC machine, so there's no way. You guys are stuck. Right. I have him. So that's how that worked. So it, it, historically, that's it. That's the end of it. There's, there's no more conversation. Uh, actually, we're supposed to have a friendly conversation after that, right? We're supposed to have a drink and fellowship and, you know, and get to know each other since that's out the way. 
So after, after this third interaction ends, you said you went inside the house and what did you do next? Uh, I had, uh, I had my family member, my, my, my brother was with me and he's a part of another fraternity. So, you know, I, he, he, he didn't know what just happened. He, he says, Hey, Cooper, it's time to go. We have a birthday party or some other party to go to. Our bags were at Swain's easy day. So we changed from our night attire, night party attire, just, you know, a tank top, some, some, some park stuff. And we start putting our suits on. Uh, and that's when I ran into another brother. Now, when Bruce, you sit- to my knowledge, that's his name. Okay. Another choke out. Yes, John. Busy evening. Indeed. Does this happen a lot in parties in you? No, sir. Actually, this is. No, it doesn't happen. Great thing. So uh, tell us what happened with Bruce. Um, I was changing clothes. Uh, I, we were in the, the living room. Bruce was it's open concept. The house is open concept. So the living room and the dining room, it's all one big room. I'm just, my brother and I, we're both changing clothes. We're, and we're, we're putting on my pants, my shirt's off, and we're just hee hee and ha ha. And he says, hey, why does this dude keep looking at you like this? I mean, he's looking hard. It's, it's kind of weird and uncomfortable. Like, hey, he's looking like he's trying to eat me or something. And so that's what I say. I say, hey, uh, what's going on? Because I didn't, I didn't know Bruce. So I said, hey, what's, what's, what's your problem with me? Like, what, what's going on? You all right over there? You, you good? And that's when he goes off. I know who you are and, and some other explicitives. And Phil told me this. And yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, hey, look, first of all, who are you? Let's just get this out the way. And that's when he told me. And he told me uh, his chapter and what year. And I said, well, look. What chapter was he? Was he PKK? No. It third I, chapter. I, it's the third chapter. And I said, it. I may be wrong about this, but if I remember right, the chapter he said, I'm like, hey, we're going to your pro fights birthday party right now. Like right now, like relax. Like I'm 12. He's like 15 or 16, something around there. I said, relax. Like it's not that deep. I don't know you. I'm changing clothes. Leave me alone. It escalated. He started raising his voice, raising his voice. And that's when I cleared out the house. I told everybody to leave. Like that wasn't. That wasn't a brother like leave just just so clearly you have something you need to say to me. I don't know who you are. I'm asking you to leave me alone. It didn't happen. And I was shirtless and I had I had my pants on, but my belt was still undone. And he put his hands up like like his fists. He, he put his hands up. Well, he's about six, three to twenty five, two forty around that around there. And that wingspan, I was within his wingspan. So if he would have threw a jab at me, it would have connected. Um, that's just that's just what that is. So that's when uh, I had. You want, you want me to say what what I did? Absolutely. I hit tossed him in and put him into a uh, front choke again. And what does that involve? So the court is aware. So when he um, when he put his fist up, I went through his guard. So I advanced quickly through his guard. Uh, I, I, I spun him tossed him over my back and then I uh, held him down by his neck. And did anybody come to break up the yes. altercation that you're having with Bruce? Yes. What happened next? I let him go. So at this point, you've had three interactions with Phil Thomas and you've had one interaction with Bruce. Correct. What time is it? This has to be around 1030, 1045, around there. And you said you're getting dressed. You're, you're looking to go out. Um, are you able to finish getting dressed at some point? No, no, sir. Because I ripped my pants. Um, moving Bruce, I ripped my pants. So uh, I changed back into my shorts, my tank top. and packed up our bag and I, you know, I went out the back. Um, I le- actually left my bag and I went out the back. I was like, now I got to figure this out. Now I got to find more clothes, figure this out. Cause the intention was to go still go to this birthday party. Right. And uh, we went out the back and we went out the back of the house 
And that's when. And who's we now? Is I, this the I'm, same group you arrived with? So family members? Yes, sir. And yes, sir. It was. Uh, because by that time, people had figured out what was going on inside the house. So we went outside going to the back. And I'm frustrated. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, I just got these pants. And I, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Point is, go out the back, sit on the patio. And everything's fine until Phil is by his truck. And he's. He's baiting me more. And, oh, there he is. What's up? What's going on? I'm like, man, what, what, do you, what more do you want from me? Like, this isn't how this is supposed to be. He's like, well, come on, come, come here. Like, well, what's up? All right, fine. So I go. And the moment I step forward, that's when Swain and a couple of their chapter brothers, they tackle me. And we fall onto the, uh, the balcony. Uh, we get up and we go out the front of the house. And it, it was peculiar because it was a rush. Like the, the temperament of the people around me kind of changed. And now I know why, but I didn't know. So it, 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 it changed. And so we went out the front of the house and they were like, oh, just, just get in the truck and go. But now I'm like, I don't want to go. Like, I don't have to go. I don't want to go. And I want to talk to this guy. And, and it, was, it was several reasons why I wanted to talk to him. Because now it had escalated to a point that wasn't, it wasn't safe anymore. And, and I didn't know him. So I, I, my thought process was, I don't want to have a problem with someone in, in, in Atlanta and not know who they are. And I'm out with people, you know, just having a good time and I'm drinking. I, I don't expect a threat. So it's even worse and just tactically unsound to have a threat that you don't know about. So I'd rather just resolve this right now. Clearly he has a problem. He clearly he had a problem with me, right? And so I'm like, hey, Let's figure this out. Like, if I did something to you, I'm sorry. If I did, like, I, I don't know you. I, that's my whole thing. So, I'm like, I don't want to leave. I, I shouldn't have to leave. Um, in between that time, if I, if, if I may back up, Swain had approached me and talked to me about Phil. He had said, well, he said, uh, you wrecked Phil, basically, over at the intervention. He said, you, you and Phil, y'all wreck. I was like, yes. He said, well, he's pretty pissed. Uh, so I said, he's pretty pissed. I said, okay, well, all right. And he wants you to get out the party. And so I just said, and he said, but you stay here. So I said, you stay here. Uh, we're getting him out the party. We're telling him to leave, but he's irritated because, uh, so I said, he's irritated because he thinks that we're choosing you over our chapter brothers. And I'm like, well, I got to figure that out. What do you want me to do? This is your house. He was like, man, you stay as long as you want. Like, this is what you do. And fast forward. I'm like, I don't want to leave. Right. And they put me in the back of the truck. And so when I get out, like I, I'm, I'm telling them, like, I'm, I don't want to like physically put me in this truck. And I'm like, I don't want to go. Like, I don't have to go. Let's figure this out. So I get in the truck. I get out of the truck. And when I get out of the truck, I know where Phil is. So I advance towards Phil. I advance. Where towards is Phil. this truck in relation to where you say Phil is? Uh. We're looking at maybe 45, 50 meters. Meters? Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, You're just the first person who's used meters. I'm sorry. You, I, you I, can use I'm any sorry. unit. You, how many leagues Absolutely. away were you? Absolutely from? leagues. I got it. Yeah. So we, we, were, we weren't close. Okay. Yes, sir. We, were, we weren't close at all. Um, and it was a small group of people who, because it was a part, it was that time of the party where, Either people were going to, you know, leave, come, go. So people were still congregating toward the end of the street, right? Because that's where people were parking. So I get out. I move past them. And because I, I know where Phil is. Now, he, I, he, just, I just, he just told me where he was. So I knew where he was. And I see Swain. So I go around Swain. And there's Phil. Um, and by the time I get to Phil, he's kind of in the shadow because he's next to his truck. So how the street was set up, like, he, it was just a natural shadow. So as he's standing there. I get a little closer and then I realize that he's in a defensive posture, right? Can you describe what you mean by a defensive posture? Um, he's about a half a step away, a half a step away from, from the truck, arm behind his back, uh, almost like one foot. He wasn't flat footed. One foot was, it was a pro stance. One foot was in front of the other, right? And his arm was his right arm was behind his back 
And that's when I realized that uh, this isn't this isn't right. So that's when I stopped. And about time I stopped at the same time, he pulled his weapon and he and he squeezed the trigger. He fired. And so at some point, I laid down. And when I laid down, I'm looking at him the whole time. I'm looking as I'm looking at you. And he didn't he didn't point his gun down. Like he held it, held his finger on the trigger. And I know that because I'm trying to look at that. And so I'm going through my checks. Like I, I smelled it, I heard it, and I hear screams. I don't feel the gunshot wound yet. I don't feel it. And so of course I, I check my body and then I realize that, hey, I have a hole in my body, but I'm still looking at Phil and I can see the curve of his finger on, on the trigger. So at that time I thought it was gonna fire a second time because it was weird because the slide wasn't back on the weapon. Um, so I'm thinking he has another another round that he's about to let off. And he had me dead to rights. You know, he had my, 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 my chest, he had my neck, my body, he had my whole entire body. He could have dealt with it, whatever he wanted to with. And so I think this, this is it. You know, I already took one to the gut, another one to the chest, and I, I, was, I was gone. Uh, by that time, I turned my attention. It, it wasn't that I didn't care, but something else caught my eye. And that's when Swain, uh, about where I'm sitting to the wall, I see Swain pass out like fall forward, like do a violent front flip, like a standing front flip. And it was weird because the last thing I remember was Swain was behind me. Now at this time, I didn't know that the bullet had went through me. I had no idea. And so when people came up to me and said, hey, you're shot. And I'm like, hey, no shit, All right? Thanks for telling me, uh, but go get Swain. Some, something's not right with Swain. Um, and that's when people went over to Swain, right? And then at that point, I don't know what happened, where Phil went. And frankly, I didn't care. Uh, and that's when I had to get people to, you know, I asked people to roll me over because I needed to know, again, I didn't know that Swain, Swain got shot. I didn't need to know where this bullet was. And so when I realized, I asked them to roll me over and see if there was an exit wound. When they told me there was an exit wound. I needed to know if it was bleeding. Um, they told me it wasn't bleeding. My entry, my entry wound was, uh, was not bleeding. So I knew I had some type of internal bleeding. I've, I've seen this before. And that's when uh, it became a rush to get me to the hospital. At that point, I still didn't know what was going on with Swain. No one knew Swain had got shot. Um, they saw me drop first. So. Um, when you were exiting the truck, the car, whatever vehicle you were in, before you started going towards Mr. Thomas, was he engaging you in any way? Outside of... When we went out the back of the house, no, not, not no. So no words were being spoken? Right, because he was so far, the house is pretty big. So he was, he was way, he was way in the back. And we remember we had traveled back through the house, the length of the house, out of the house, a few <laughs> more meters to the truck. About how far away were you uh, when you were shot? from Mr. Thomas? We're about, mm, it was about four, four, about four, four to six meters. Yeah. And you see the person uh, who shot you in the courtroom today? I do. Can you identify that person by their location in the courtroom in an article of clothing? Yes. Black suit, gold tie, white shirt, or colored shirt. Uh, does he have a particular hairstyle? It's bald. Does he uh, have any uh, accessories on his face? Black glasses. And uh, Your Honor, at this time, can you let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? He has. It's Shell. Ms. Cooper, were you armed with any weapons at any point during the day? I was not. When you were approaching Mr. Thomas. Describe for the court how fast you were moving. I was running. And what were you doing with your hands? Running. So natural running motion. Did you say anything to Mr. Thomas prior to being shot? I think it was something to the effect of, uh, why do you have a problem with me 
what's going on. Let's let, 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 let's do something. Let's talk about it. And what was uh, what was the demean? What was your demeanor and your your voice like when you were saying those words? I wasn't whispering. I was probably I was yelling. Did you ever use the word kill no. before you got shot? No. Judge, I don't think I have anything further. So my thought, Ms. Foster or Ms. Hawkins, is that rather than start cross-examination now and do it for six minutes, which is all we could do, unless your cross-examination is only six minutes, um, we ought to start with um, Mr. Cooper tomorrow morning, um, just picking up where we left off. Um, is that going to um, break any momentum you've got, or are you all right with that? That's fine, Your Honor. I'll run towards questioning him tomorrow. Okay. Um, Mr. Cooper, I understand you're here from Dallas, but you may have flown here in a private jet. Um, Hopefully you able to join us again tomorrow morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Excellent. Yes, sir. Um, I've sent an email out. I'm pretty sure I've got a plea at nine um, in a triple homicide. It'll be good to plead that one out. Um, I'd ask you all to be here at 915 just in case um, there is no plea. Um, but I won't make you get here right at nine because if the plea is happening, we probably won't start till closer till 930. But everyone should try to be here by 915. Um, we will continue with Mr. Cooper's testimony, and it sounds like we've got one or two officers or former officers who will testify, and that may be it, other than, in theory, we could reopen evidence for Mr. Maddox if um, the impeachment material that uh, Ms. Foster is looking for somehow doesn't come in through one of those officers. Um, I think we should be done by lunchtime. Um, That's my hope, Judge. Okay. Um, we'll just have a late lunch if we're not. You say done any argument and everything? Well, we'll talk about what you want to do for argument. Sometimes people want to file something in writing. Other, okay, and other times people want to argue. I'm good um, either way. Uh, oh, except I've got this. Well, we will um, fill as much of the morning as we fill. I forgot that I've got this um, meeting with a judge from Colorado about competency dockets at 11. So we're gonna, you'll have an early lunch, actually, and then we'll just pick up after that. Um, to wrap up what we need to wrap up. It would be great if we could finish with Mr. Cooper before that 11 o'clock so he can be on his way and then we'll just work through the officers. Okay. Um, Mr. Costello, Ms. Jackson, anything else from the state before we break? I don't think so, Judge. Uh, Ms. Hawkins, Ms. Foster, are we good till tomorrow? Uh, Your Honor, I won't be cross-examining Mr. Cooper, but I'd ask that you inform him that he's still under oath sure. and that he needs not talk to anybody, including the state, regarding his testimony. Right. So, Mr. Cooper, you can talk to anyone you want, but if you're talking to the prosecutors or um, any of the folks who you understand to be witnesses or connected to the incident of May 15th, 2021, don't talk to them about your testimony or that incident. Talk to them about Final Four or the weather or your airplane, um, uh, but not about this situation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. He rushed me. Nigga, I kill you. I had my gun. He rushed me and I discharged. Okay. That's at my 12 o'clock. Okay. He stood there. I don't know if he. But hit him, ricochet, or whatever the case may be. Right now, he's six to eight feet from me. Okay. To my nine o'clock, which took toward the school uh -huh. I just told y'all about. Uh -huh. It's my chapter, bro. Swain. Swain. Christopher Swain. It said Christopher's down. Why Christopher down? I have now no. Christopher Lion, brother, which is. What's the call? The guy that Jamal called that's with me. Like, damn, what happened? Me and him, dumbfounded, don't know. We picked a bunch of guys, and I don't know who did it. A bunch of guys ran to my 12 o'clock, grabbed the guy, and disappeared in a car. It was not a truck. It was some type of sedan. I'm not concentrating on the sedan, because me and my other chapter brother, my fraternity brother, sees 
Chris to my nine o'clock. Discharge here, that's my nine o'clock. We both rushed to him with a female that I don't know who this female was. Me and Carter, Hannikin, grab Swing, lift his body up. He's saying, bam, I'm here. I'm like, how you here? What happened? He said, I don't know. We put him in my vehicle. I turn on my hazards like, and we shoot ass here where I meet y'all two. Okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so you're facing this way. I'm facing this way. I'm standing right here. Okay, so just, just not, I'm not asking you to remember exactly. So he rushes at you. You feel threatened. Because he's already threatened. You, okay. And he, he's okay, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm sorry. It's okay. Let me, let me talk. He's rushing. He's, he's threatened to kill you. He's rushing at you. How many times do you think you shot? I'm shot once. I know. Okay. All right. So you, we don't know how Swain gets shot. Okay. He's at my 9 o'clock. So let me, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Other than your gunshot, how many gunshots did you hear? I don't remember hearing nothing. Okay. Was there? Because I know you're concentrated on the on on this the, the threat at you. Did you hear anybody else say anything about a gun? Because I know you said there was some a female and some other people in the car. I don't remember hearing. I don't remember hearing no one saying additional gun. Okay. Bam, bam, whatever the case yeah, okay. may be. Outside of my blue field at my twelve o'clock. Okay. All right. Let me People started screaming, asking what happened at my nine o'clock when they saw Swain okay. on the ground. So, is the house at Elizabeth? Yes. Do you know if that house has a ring camera on it or anything? Do you know? No, it doesn't. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it does or not. Okay. Okay. That's fine. If you don't know, you don't know. We can't make I, something be there that's not there. I, I don't know. All right. Let me go talk to Mr. Phillip again. Mr. Mr. Carter. Carter, Jamal Carter. That's him. Yeah, in the purple. purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I, on yeah. The telephone right now. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly that. So, you, you guys just stand by with this gentleman for me for right now. This one the cameras at the school. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let me, let me go talk to this gentleman right here. Hi. For the record, Judge, I'm uh, stopping the body cam recording at the 40 minute 30 seconds. Investigator McManus, who is the bald gentleman with the shirt? Is that a copy of yours? Is that a no, Grady so person? So that was a, a gentleman that the uh, Mr. Thomas had identified as his attorney. Okay. Had shown up at the scene. Got it. Or at the hospital, I shouldn't say. Scene, right. At the hospital. And uh, Investigator McManus, the statement that you took from the defendant in this case, um, he. He stated to you that he, when he discharged his weapon, Cooper was six to eight feet away from him? Approximately, yes. And he also said Wayne was at his nine o'clock? Yes, sir. Which would mean that Swain was standing to his left. You also have the opportunity to interview a Frederick Maddox? Yes, sir. And Judge, at this time, I'm going to publish approximately four minutes and 30 seconds of Mr. Maddox's statement from investigator McManus's body cam. All right. And for the record, starting the body cam at the 53 minute mark on the dot. What is your last name? No, no. M-A-D-D-O-X. M-A-D-D-O-X? Yes. What's your first name? Frederick. F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K. E-F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K. E-R-I-C-K. What's your date of birth? 1991. What's a good contact phone number for you? Area code 678-993-7118. Got an address for him? What's your address? Uh, 4307 Langdon Drive, L A N G D O N Drive, Decatur, Georgia 30035. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you drove the gentleman that shot to the abdomen. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Uh, what I know, everybody called him Coop. Okay, so you don't know, do you know the guy? No, well, I know him from coming over the house from him being one of the bros. The, okay, so, so you don't know, know him? No. Okay, so tell me what you saw or heard tonight. Just what you saw. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I saw, what I was telling her, coming down the driveway as I'm finna move my girlfriend's car, the car that I drove Coop in. Which is what? What kind of car is it? Uh, Nissan Altima. Okay. Black Nissan Altima. Coming down to move the car. As I'm coming down to move the car, by this time, I see Coop rushing up. As he's rushing up to the dude who shot him, it's on some like, yeah, what's up, what's up? He got his gun to him. Oh, you gonna have to shoot me. Dodge, I'm right here. here. You gonna have Georgia. to shoot me. Ha. Charlie, Queen, George, Like I told three, him, nine, through and through, because there's only yeah, one uh, shot. He coop through the hat, and he hit Swain in the thigh and the heart. Okay, uh, All right. and that literally was a... Uh, everything went literally was probably like a five minute window from me walking outside to go and get the car to where that. Okay. So did you hear other other than that? Did you hear Coop say anything? Did, did he? Did you? What did you see Coop do or, or hear him say? As, no, as literally, I'm walking. Down, I'm walking down the driveway. I see everybody because you know people are cars are leaving. People still outside. He runs literally runs up full speed. Full speed. Boom. It's like three Q brothers that's trying to stop him. He gets around yeah. everybody and gets up to his face real close. Who gets up to whose face? Who gets up to, I don't know his name over there. Okay. okay. Gets up to his face. Oh, I'm him. What's up? 10, 23. You know, Tell me, uh, one male today. He's still, he's like this. Like not reaching for nothing. One male today. Possibly three. 125 hours. Pow. Okay. All right. So you just heard the one gunshot. Mm -hmm. That literally was all it because I was... Right here, this is the distance. Okay. Literally. Okay, so where is so where is the dude that shot to the leg? Where where's so okay. so yeah, I'm, okay. I'm 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 the shooter. You the shooter. I'm the shooter. Yeah. Right, right there. Come 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 right there. Right there. So and, and and you're and you're the aggressor. This is cool in his face. This okay. Close. So, like so they're, 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 they're literally, they're, they're about this, they're, they're about this right. Mm -hmm. Okay. He hit him like that. Boom. So, as so he hits him, it was like, yep, just like that. Boom, boom, in the leg. Okay. One shot. I can go with that. Okay. All right. So, was anybody in the car with you when you drove Cooper down here? Um, one of the other bros, he's with him. Like, he went with him, and I dropped him off in the car. Okay, what was he wearing? Uh, black, well, black, um, like a black. Collar shirt, okay. you know, like from the circle. I got you. And dress shoes, like okay. Black dude, dress. I think I want to say he had dress. There was so much going on. Yeah. I can't remember. I want to say he had dress, but dark skin dude was with Coop right now. He went up there with him. Okay. All right. Hang tight for me. All right. No, come with me. Are you doing the report? Yes. Yeah. So come with me. Um, do you know the guy that came with you? No. Okay. You don't know him at all. They, they all. They all two bros. I got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. For the rest, uh, I'm stopping the recording at the 57 minute, 25 second mark. Investigator McManus, did you or any other Atlanta police officer make any arrests that night or morning? For that scene, no, sir. Oh. Uh, the totality of circumstances the fact that we we're really you're getting three points of view you've you've got mr thomas's point of view and your two witnesses but i can't talk to the other two victims because they're, they're in search okay it's not that you were forbidden the doctors are well the doctors are saying you, you can't interact with these folks no no they're they've gone to surgery got i it. physically just can't talk so and we had information there may be video cameras out at the incident location so don't don't have a real complete picture of, of what took place so it's not uncommon to kind of obtain statements and run it by supervisors and 
if they're okay with it to to release everybody you know verify who everybody is make sure that nobody's flight risk nobody's going to get on an airplane and leave on us we know who all you know who all the, the all the involved parties are and we felt it was best to really send this over to at that time it was our gun assault team but it's now called the ag assault unit and have them do more follow-up before charges if there were going to be any charges for me and that kind of brings me to my next question uh typically what is the atlanta police procedure to follow up on a shooting case like this so you said that you you hand it off to the gun assault team or ag assault unit yeah so so part of what my, is we respond to a lot of these things i do this all the time so we go out we do a preliminary investigation okay where you know again we're usually responding within minutes depending on how big it is of, of the incident so we process scenes we take initial statements uh we try to find video we, we try to do as much as we can depending on the totality of the circumstances at the time but sometimes those incidences those incidents we, we document them and then we send it over to the appropriate investigative unit in this case ag assault or robbery, special victims uh property crimes auto theft whatever the case may be, and have them because they have more people more resources than i have to do a, a better investigation so better a better better totality of circumstances because what i what i have at that time can change on evidence more witnesses can come forward video can surface social media can pop up so you know what we have at the time that that it may be going one way but it can turn and go another so uh you transferred your responsibilities to the case to an yeah, it, it, unit. you would have gotten assigned or had gotten assigned to another detective and uh did this conclude your involvement in this case yeah, after this night is I had I never spoke to the lead detective after that. I was never asked to do anything further with it. So, okay. uh, Judge, I think that's all I have for Investigator McManus. All right, Ms. Hopkins. And just to manage your expectations, in about eight minutes, we're going to have to stop. So you have as many minutes as you want, but I'm going to interrupt you if it's more than eight. It's fine. I have three questions. All right. <laughs> um good morning investigator morning. mcmanus um you are post certified correct yes and you have arrest powers correct yes and based on what you heard that night if you felt a crime had been committed you would have arrested somebody correct not necessarily so if you thought a crime happened you would just let it go it, it depends on the totality of circumstances and the totality of this of these circumstances was no arrest no arrest that's all I have, Your Honor. All right. I think that was four questions, but I'll let it slide. <laughs>